Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, is I, the healest of ballers, and we are here with episode 97 of the most spectacular podcast in professional wrestling in all of the YWC, the Losers Lunch Podcast. I'm, of course, your co-host. You guys know who I am, Heel Baller. And um, after a very long, incredible, controversial week, we are here to discuss and talk about All Out, Clash of the Castle, and, of course, NXT um worlds collide so it was a weird up and down week but before we get to all that ladies and gentlemen i want to introduce of course my other co-host he is the optimistic leader himself my fellow loser and brother christian miracle welcome ah much better it seems like we have actually become a lot more sophisticated these days i think so yeah well tomorrow is a big moment for me folks it's friday september the 9th but i will also say that tomorrow is my 10 year anniversary on youtube Yee. So I have a good video in store for that. In the meantime, though, that's tomorrow. This is today. And today we have three papers to talk about. Before, But before we get to any of that, we need to take a moment and acknowledge something. And no, I'm not talking about Roman Reigns. We'll get to him later. Nope. <laughs> and no, I'm not talking about the Nope movie either, like you just mentioned. Exactly. By the way, though, it's available now on digital. So if you didn't get a chance to watch it, now's your chance. There you go. Go watch it. All right, uh, <laughs> this thing that we need to talk about really quickly is a very shocking thing that happened at the time yesterday, September 8th, and that was, folks, mm -hmm. the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. Yeah, no joke, folks. I literally just walked in the door and got the news. I'm like, what? Oh, oh dang. <laughs> you gotta admit, that is a major deal. It may not seem major for a lot of people, but let's be honest, it actually is. It is, actually. 70 years of being the Queen of England, I believe, right? Yes, sir. 70 freaking years? What? Like, like wow. Her Majesty, has, Her Majesty passed away peacefully. Uh, I, mm -hmm. The news was fast. It went from, I, I did see a news report that said she was under medical supervision. And then, yeah. literally like an hour or two later, we get the word, no, she's gone. Yeah. She may not, she's not even our queen, but you, we, can, we can actually feel the hit. Yeah, for, like, it's like a gut punch, bro. Yeah. It's so, wow. Well, we're going to take this moment, folks, before we get into the excitement, mm -hmm. take a moment of silence in honor of yes, Queen sir. Elizabeth. Thank you very much. <sighs> Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. It's 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 insane, and uh, you know there are people out there making fun of this thing. Oh well, it, it should have come sooner. All that kind of stuff. You people are disgusting, and I know, like, oh, yeah, look I've at seen... her past. I don't have time to look at people's past. Okay? Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that a lot, but we're not going to get into that. We already have a lot of controversial mm -hmm. things to talk about, anyway. Yes, we do. Yes, we uh, do. Three pay-per-views happened over the course of Labor Day weekend, as we were excited for. Uh, we're going to start things off with WWE Clash of the Castle, which will be followed by NXT Worlds Collide, and then AEW All Out. Yes, sir. Or more like AEW Fucked Up. <laughs> you mean, uh, Christian, I think you should rename it AEW Fallout. Fallout. You know. <laughs> yeah, Fallout. <laughs> I would, but unfortunately, the creators of that game franchise would probably get pissed off at us. That is true. And we don't want to. We don't want to provide an insult of the Fallout series. That is true, because it's such a good series. Uh, I'm not. I've, I'll be honest. I've played Fallout Four. I've only played the fourth one. I'm not kidding. Wow, same here. <laughs> I, I did like it though. It was. It was fun. I did too. Um. Okay. We're gonna move. We're gonna start things off with that would be Clash at the Castle, which took place on Saturday, September the third, at one o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, or in Willie's case, noon. Yes, sir. That was because, you know, it was at Cardiff, Wales, and my God, that Principality Stadium was a big place. For real, bro. That was absolutely insane, and the show itself was magnificent. It really was. There was little to no bad things. Really not. No, no, seriously, honestly. It was really, really good. 
The major bad thing, of course, was, well, the culmination of the show, but we'll get to that at the culmination of the show. That's very true. But we're going to start things off with this. This was a six-woman tag team match, and that was Damage Control, Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Io Sky taking on the team of Bianca Belair, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka. That was the opening night. And I just want to say, I like. I know that the, s the stage setup was short, like really small, but it actually fit. If you look at Finn Balor's uh, post that he made on social media where he's walking through it. Yes, sir. No joke. I thought that was just something he created. Then realized he's, he was actually walking through what looked like an actual castle corridor. For real? And I was like, oh, shit, that's the stage? Shit, that, that actually looks cool. I liked when, when the whole floor was like fire and stuff. I was making jokes like near the floor is lava challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Floor is lava. Oh, God. Floor is lava ah, challenge. Ah. Well, joke's on you. The wall is lava, too. Yeah, true. No! No! Well, you lost then, right? Yeah, for real. The only ones who wonder, I'll be honest, how fun do you think that must have been for the fans that were sitting literally right there? Dude, like, probably really fun. Yeah, small places. So, And as a result, you can tell how small it was because damage control couldn't exactly have their separate poses, like, unless they were scrunched together. That is true. Uh, and I also like the castle setup they had above the ring. I'm not kidding. I actually thought that was a CGI thing. That's what I thought too at first. When the show like, started and it appeared, I was like, oh, a CGI castle above the ring. And then I realized, wait a minute, that's actually there. Yes, sir. Because in other shots, it was still there. Mm-hmm. That's when I was like, oh, my God. And what I was also glad for is, um, based on the outside looks when they were showing the outside of the stadium, it was a nice day. So why didn't they open this? Uh, why didn't they open the roof? That's what I'm wondering too. I thought the roof was open beforehand. It was just the castle up above. I was like, huh. Okay. I mean, of course, if it was if it was kind of cold, then I understand. Oh yeah. Because we don't. I didn't exactly check the weather over there. I um, did. It looked like good weather over there. I got lie. But here's the thing: it was humid at my area during the show. Same here. Yeah, it was humid in your right? Yeah. Uh, I contacted me on my bro, Long Night Josh, and he said it was extremely humid where he was, too. So I'm like, oh my god, a humid day wow. for Clash of the Castle. There you go. <laughs> well, let's just be thankful that it wasn't as hot as the time WWE Super Showdown in 2019. Remember that? There you go. In Saudi Arabia, it was extremely hot. They had so many air conditioners around the ring. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so Damage Control won the match, and uh, it was an amazing opening contest. Great back and forth action, and Damage Control, of course, as you know, Dakota and Neo failed to win, failed to win the, the women's tag team titles on Monday Night Raw, but that didn't mean that they lost their momentum, because, oh my god, that was amazing performances by all of them. Yes, sir. No, I like, like, this, this whole show was, like, very wrestling and very um, story-based spill, which I appreciate Really yeah. appreciate that professional wrestling. Triple H is doing a good job so far. Yes, he is. Like I, we're not even being suck ups. Like he, he actually is doing a good job. He is. Did you actually like how you know every time Bailey tagged in, the fans started singing the Bailey song? Yeah, we haven't heard that song in a while. Yeah, that's why I was like, oh man, this this brings back memories when she was in that awful hug life crap. <laughs> hey, oh, Bailey, who ah? I want to know if you'll be my girl. Well, she's single now, so hit her DMs up. I'm kidding. Don't do that, folks. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do weird. that. <laughs> what I also like was, you know, any... don't Actually, I didn't like this part, but um, the unfortunate result of them wanting to sing that song to Bailey, uh, anytime Dakota and Neil were in the ring, they were chanting, We Want Bailey. They were ignoring the other two. Yeah, they were. And at that moment, I was like, okay, that's a little, that's a little much. Yeah, all they cared about was Bailey, which, you know, understand what she's hot as heck, but still, but still. And then meanwhile, uh, Alexa Bliss, she can't seem to make up her mind. Is she going to bring the Lily doll out? Is she not going to bring the Lily doll out? Uh, but she yeah, alternates between one or the other. I'm confused with this gimmick myself. Like, what is it supposed to be? A I mean, it's a hybrid of both, you know, her spooky character and, you know, her playful side. But, yeah, it's just really confusing what she's trying to be nowadays. Yeah, I miss back when, you know, I missed the early days of Alexa Bliss. How insane was that? Dude, same. Same thing with Asuka. Oh, yeah. But Asuka still performed well in the match. And, of course, Bianca Belair, absolutely. The match ended yes, with Bailey pinning Bianca. 
And that was actually, here's a fun fact, folks. The first time Bianca got pinned in over 300 days. Yes, sir. So the first time in 2022, and it was to Bailey. Yeah, set to the future challenger. Oh, yeah. I honestly, here, I'm actually going to take an early guess and assume uh, they're going to main event Extreme Rules. Ooh, there you go. I wouldn't mind cool that, that, honestly. If you're going to bring back uh, the I Quit match they should have had at Money in the Bank last year, then go for it. There's a story behind it. As long as it makes sense to have the women main event. You know, doesn't matter if men or women, you know, as long as the storyline makes sense, you know, the right scenario and the right place for it. Yeah, we already know it. that the Universal Championship is not going to be on the line at Extreme Rules, and we'll get to that at Spoiler! the end. Anyways. We'll get to that at the end. So that's why we're thinking about matches that should definitely be the main event. And honestly, Bailey and real. Bianca have done well in their feud since even 2021 to the point where I wouldn't mind it. Exactly, bro. Bro. So what are your thoughts on the six-woman tag? It was a pretty fun match. I mean, uh, very back and forth based. Um, I really thought that, you know, the crowd was super, I wouldn't say split, but they were more for, um, I think, damage control, which, again, I, I prefer to call it control. That's just me. Um, but um, it was a really fun match, um, and uh, I really wanted to see Io Shirai and Asuka again in the ring. I mean, banger. Um, Io, Bailey being the by, one by the way, to it's, it's Io um, Sky. Cool. Io Sky, yeah, Io Sky. Io Shirai, Io we're Sky. Still, uh, we're Io. still trying to get used to it. It just sounds so yeah, similar. Are. Yeah, it does. But yeah, um, uh, Bailey being the one to pin Bianca, I you know, think I predicted that last week. So there you go. And um, everyone else did great too. Alexa, I mean, she was just, I won't say she was there, but it was the, the story was more with Bianca and Bailey in the ring. And uh, everyone else did their, their job well. I loved how Dakota Kai mocked Bianca's butt slap. And I guess it's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, they are wild. <laughs> I remember when yeah, I performed um, Bianca Belair's entrance at WrestleMania Access. I think I performed the butt slap. Yeah, you did. It was awesome. Everybody was cheering yeah, me. Because I don't think they expected a guy to perform that and also nail it at the same time. Also, you need to get, like, the long braid and swing the long braid. <laughs> yeah, you want me, yeah, you want me to grow my hair all the way out. That's going to probably take me about 10 years. There you go. <laughs> nah, it's all good. I'm not going to do that. I like the match as well. The... Six Woman Tag was a good way to open the show. It got the crowd excited, especially for what's to come. Um, yes, sir. The very next match that we're going to get to uh, was the match of the night, in my opinion. That's the Intercontinental Championship match. What did I just say? You know, honestly, Props. let's let's uh, let's rephrase that. Intercontinental Championship fight. Yeah, this I, I told you all last week they're going to kill each other, and they, they did. They, they killed each other. <laughs> Match of the freaking weekend. Okay, Intercontinental title says. match. Gunther defended against Sheamus. And in his entrance, what would you think of Ludwig Kaiser bringing out Giovanni Vinci to reform Dude, Imperium? I freaking lost my mind. I'm like, oh my god, Imperium, yeah, yeah, Imperium. <laughs> and honestly, that just made it even better, you know, when you, you see them walk into the ring. Gunther, the ring, Gunther, oh, Gunther. <laughs> I called my friends on Instagram. We started marking. I'm like, oh my God, Gunther, Gunther, yay, and you, Imperium. It was, it was so cool. And here's like, here's the thing. The, all three of them have been victims of the name change, but honestly, I like their new names better than their originals. I don't know why enough, go that would ever go yeah. that way, but I like it because, you know, Gunther over Walter sounds honestly a lot more intimidating. It's funny you say that, Christian, because apparently Gunther likes his name too, and he prefers to be called Gunther now instead of Walter. Yeah, he, he yeah, he's he's, not, he's flat out refusing to go back to Walter if he was offered. Yeah, for real. And I don't he blame likes him. his new name. Ludwig Kaiser used to be Marcel Bartel. Ludwig Kaiser, I think that's a better name. Giovanni Vinci oh, used stuff. to be uh, Fabian Eitner. I mean, both those names, in my opinion, are equally as good. So, and besides, the team is still Imperium. It is. All, that's cha all that changed was the names, but not their gimmicks. Which I think people forget to realize they usually don't change gimmicks, but you know, what do I know, right? And is this just me, or does the Brawling Brutes seem like an actual legitimate team now? I think they are. Even though we all know Butch is starting to look more like Pete Dunne again. He is. That'd be he nice. Is. Here's the thing. Uh, I wouldn't mind him going back to being Pete Dunne and having the, the whole Bruiserweight stuff... But we still, keep them in the group, though. I prefer both. I think you should, like, combine the two. That's just me. Yep. So I like the Butch character, too. Butch. Butch Dunn butch, or Peter Yeah, Butch, butch. Dunn. <laughs> yeah, Butch Dunn. Peter honestly. Dunn. Yeah, Butch Dunn. Uh, so this is why, honestly, here's the, what I like about the buildup into this, and, you know, especially right after everyone made their entrances, uh, Imperium and the Brawling Brutes started fighting, but Gunther and Sheamus did not take their eyes off each other. Mm-hmm. 
And just, you know, when they rung the bell to start the match, we actually felt the electricity. Mm-hmm. I was already cheering with the bell rang because I knew I was in for potentially a five-star classic. And in my personal opinion, it was a five-star classic. It was. Match was 20 minutes long, and they did not waste any freaking time. 20 minutes, it felt like 30. <laughs> yeah, Imperium and the Brawling Brutes brawled all the way on, up out of the stage and out of the out of the stadium. Uh, and what I Good. like is no team tried to interfere at any point. Good. It was clean. I'm telling you, Triple H literally said, boys, go out there and have fun and kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah, we saw... We saw a lot of things, a cool moments, but the one thing I want to take note of... What you got? Sheamus using his high cross. Oh, he hasn't used we've, that in a while. We've not seen that move in years, so how cool was it to see it again? It's really great. He should have honestly finished off Gunther with that, honestly. Dude, there was like... I think the ending spot for me was the best part. Like, he went for the broke kick, I believe. Missed. Gunther hit like the big Actually, leg. Actually, no, it was over. Now his back gave out because Gunther stepped, yeah, like, no, kept stomping gave, yeah. on his tailbone. Yep, that was a it smart was... move on his on the, on his part because he knows it's coming. Mhm. Mm yeah. Oh my gosh! I literally stood up. No show. I stood up and started clapping when the match ended. I'm like five stars, five five stars. Match the freaking year. Yep. Like in my opinion, at least one of the matches of the year. It's not often you see like a clothesline win a match for you, huh? Mhm. Mm it's just the way Gunther hits it, though. Exactly. <laughs> I think we pretty much just covered how great that match was just like that. Our voices will not do it justice. Please, yeah. please go watch this match. I yeah. even said this is up there with Dragunov and Gunther and even Pete Dunne and Gunther. No joke. Yeah, um, I really think that... Hear me out on this. They should yeah. have a six-man tornado street fight at Extreme Rules with those two teams. Oh boy! Put Imperium against the Brawling Brutes, six man tornado street fight, and let them go crazy at Extreme Rules. Especially since we heard Triple H, folks, Extreme Rules is the next pay per view, and Triple H um, was honestly given the green light to make this one of the mo a memorable pay per view. Especially since this could be potentially the last Extreme Rules, so he wants to make sure the last one is the fun one. Oh really? Last Extreme Rules? Man, fine with me. Yeah, last year, last year we gotta admit that there was a lack of stipulations, but in my opinion, it was still a good show. And I'm not just oh, being yeah, biased me. because I was there. There you go. Yeah, I truly believed it was I mean, extreme it because you you felt like extreme like moments were happening throughout the match, and then of course, well, the demon Balor yeah. like uh, slipped on the ropes when it broke. We don't talk about that. We still don't even know what the fuck happened. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, we don't. They're not gonna ever address it ever again. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, six man tornado street fight is exactly what Imperium and the Brawling Brutes could use in this exchange. I really think that this is gonna be amazing. Hey, that was that question. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, he'll barely. He's got family in the background, folks. I do. I do. Red tea, actually. So yeah, we might be might be mute in between. So yeah, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Bear with me. We all bear with you every oh, single time. <laughs> there you go, dog. Well, we're going to move on to the next match anyway. That's the SmackDown Women's Championship between Liv Morgan and Shayna Baszler. And in that match, mm -hmm. I will admit, Liv Morgan surprised me. Oh, really? I did not think that she could beat Shayna Baszler. At least not, by, with, not without sheer dumb luck. Which, that... Kind of was luck, I guess. Not really. The way she managed to survive and everything and hit her finishers to win the match. She had Baszler on her back counting one, two, three. Which is the one thing yeah, on last true. week's podcast we thought would not happen at all. And she actually did it. So I will admit, I was wrong in that exchange. And hey, I'm a man of my word if I admit I'm wrong. There you go. So I thought that was cool. Like, the match, it was really not good. the best in comparison to the freaking banger of an Intercontinental title match we just saw. Once again, Liv Morgan is on the backseat of, like, you know, the piss break match. And it, it really sucks to be in that position, but I'm sorry, nobody, and I mean nobody, that includes even the next night with NXT and All Elite Wrestling. Nothing, in my opinion, topped what we saw with Gunther and Sheamus. That, that's just me. Go ahead and tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. I don't care. 
<laughs> I really think nothing could have followed Gunther and Sheamus. That's just me. I really enjoyed that match. And after like that match, I was legit winded. Yeah, I was winded too. <laughs> I was oh honest. I, here's the thing. I would have preferred that Shayna Baszler won the match and won the SmackDown Women's Championship because oh, yeah. she was, no disrespect to Liv Morgan, she was more long overdue than Liv ever was. So sure. that's why I. But at the same time, I'm okay with this because I'm just hoping this wasn't. This is not going to hurt on momentum. Nah, I don't think so. Honestly, I really hope not. <laughs> um. Overall, what did you think about the match, though, Willie? Um. <sighs> Well, like I said, I was winded after the last match, so honestly, going into it, I was like, well, I hate saying this is probably the snooze break match, and it it kind of was, but the way Liv won was very interesting, you know, uh, pinning, you know, Shanna Bays in the middle of the ring, that's a pretty big accomplishment there, and um, it was really good, um, she pretty much got dominated through the entire match, and then she came back with the big uh, comeback on kind of stuff, and finish her and survived, so yeah, pretty good. And Shanna's arm manipulation during the matches, she makes it seem so real. Of course, she's a legit MMA fighter. And um, just everything she did in the match was really, really calculating and vicious and violent. Like, it's people like her and Pete Dunne and, you know, um, you know, people like that, you know, joint manipulation. I don't like it. You, they make it seem so real. And it's like, that's 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 very cool to watch. And it's, it gets the viewer interested. It's like, wow, are they really going to break that person's arm or their shoulder or whatever? And she made it look real, and, you know, way Liv survived. You know, she was the underdog going into the match, and she was the underdog coming out of it. And um, whatever lies from her head, <laughs> if she'll surpass that one, we will find out. But it's a really fun match overall. I really enjoyed it. Yep. Huh. So, I will also say that, you know, I'm... Here's the thing. Like, the one thing I'm just confused of is what happens now? Does she have another match with Shayna? Is Ronda Rousey going to get involved? I think what they're going to do... I think they're going to do either a triple threat or they're going to move on to Ronda. I really do. I think either way, the title is going back to Ronda. And I know people are not going to be happy about Well, some people aren't going to be happy about that, but I think most people are going to be happy about that. Um, I love how, by the way, I love how Ronda's playing like this tweener, like dick, like heel. So, <laughs> yeah. So. She's, per she's basically being a, without, okay, not ex not exactly a good comparison, but she kind of reminds me, she's like a female Steve Austin because, you know, she's the fine authority thinking, hey, I'm Ronda Rousey. I can do whatever I want. The only exactly. difference is she doesn't. The only difference right. is she doesn't exactly have the charm that Steve Austin did. No, she doesn't. But that's okay, you know. But at the same time, nobody should be trying to be Steve Austin. They should be, you know, the first them. Yeah, WWE back in 2019, back in lunch. Anyways. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to the next match, which was a tag team match, and that is Edge and Rey Mysterio. And Edge, for whatever reason, I thought for a second he was dressed like Batman. Uh, I thought uh, uh, one of my friends made this joke. Um, I don't what the joke was. Oh yeah, it's like an edge like uh, El Generico. <laughs> yeah, El Generico he took on you know, Sammy <laughs> took on the Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest, who of course was accompanied by Rhea Ripley. And I actually said to myself, um, I get what's going on with Rhea and Dominic here, but uh, can we add them both to the match? Make this some sort of intergender thing? No, uh, no, I I thought I didn't think about that, but. I don't think it. I don't know. Today's uh, you know, society is. I don't freaking know. It could be fun with a woman hitting a man, but you know, I don't, I don't know. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> How to a send a bill? A woman, you know what I'm about, folks. <laughs> All right. Um, the one thing that here's thing. Everybody knows the big deal about this is uh, Dominic Mysterio's heel turn. Heel turn after the match ended. Yes, sir. But uh, I just gotta flat out say this. You gotta stop having the Judgment Day lose all the time. I'm going to say this right here, Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope they'll pay your ears. Stop having Finn take the freaking pen. <laughs> that the rhymed. Has just been. What's up? That rhymed. Finn take the pen. Exactly. Hey, maybe My that's why he's called needs that. To stop taking the pen. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Honestly, like, Judgment Day, I haven't talked about this, you know, a few weeks ago by myself. And I was thinking in my mind, I'm like, you know, at first Judgment Day was like, I was very excited, very hyped. And I do think there's some hope. And I'm, I really hope Triple H can at least rectify what, you know, Vince, you know, kind of screwed up. Um, but it's just at this point, it's like, what, what else can you do with this group? There's nothing else. Like, they got the music. They got the theme. They got the gimmick. But what else is there? 
hashtag people think Rhea Rip. And I'm going to say this, ladies and gentlemen, there's no leader of judgment day. So I don't know where we were getting, oh, Rhea Ripley's the leader of the group or whatever. Balor's the leader of the group. There's no leader of the group at all. Um, I just, I'm, to be honest, man, I just really hope judgment day just goes their separate ways. And, and great, it was great to see Finn as a heel. Keep him as a heel. But it's just, and for me at least, it's just not working out. And I really think it's time to move on with Judgment Day. And, you know, and having them lose, it's just, and I know they've been taking some wins on Raw and stuff, but they need to get wins on pay-per-views. And the fact that, you know, they really haven't been getting anything on pay-per-view, just for much size to, like, you know, what Triple H, uh, what, not, not just Triple H, because, you know, this is still, you know, this was Vin, Vince's thing. I think Triple H hopefully will ratify, like I said. But I'm just tired of my guy taking the pin all the time. And Judgment Day, I think it's just one eye that's welcome. I think it's time to move on and just quietly remove the stable. I know having Dominic, spoiler alert, you know, Dominic in the stable, maybe there's some light to it, but I don't know, man. Like, I'm just really over Judgment Day, and it, it's sad. It really is sad. And again, I really hope there is some hope with the group, but I, for me, at least personally, I think it's time to can Judgment Day <laughs> and quietly move on for a while. Nothing yeah. against them. They're all great performers and stuff. Rhea, Balor, Damian. Now, Dominic, all <laughs> great performance and stuff. And there's a story. But I don't know, man. <laughs> Sorry for that little ramble. I, I've just been holding this in for months. And I'm just so sick and tired of seeing Judgment Day lose, especially my guy take the pen. I was so devastated. I'm like, really? Really again? So uh, that's that's all I got to say about the, the thing right there, Judgment Day. But in my opinion, the match is really, really fun. It was very fast-paced. I loved how Edge and, and uh, Balor interacted with the, in the ring. Really hope we get that match one day. I was pretty disappointed this match was made. I was thinking, you know, let's do Finn and Edge, since Damien had his match with Edge in Toronto. But they did this match. I'm like, okay, fair enough. And um, it's really fun and um, very fast-paced. Um, the storytelling was great. Um, Finn's freaking facial expressions still crack me up to this day. And uh, Damien did great. Dominic did great with the heel turn afterwards, which I really enjoyed. Kicked Edge low, below the belt. Come <laughs> on, the hell out of his father. Um, it was just, everything was just, it went well, in my opinion, and, um, I really, I really enjoyed the whole match, just the outcome with me, you know, with Balor taking the L, and again, Judgment Day taking the L, that just rubbed me the wrong way, but immediately afterwards, Dominic turned heel, I'm like, maybe, just maybe there's hope, but I don't know, <laughs> that's my whole thing on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you did a good job in covering that. That's my whole thing on it, folks. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> What'd you think of it? Honestly, that was really a good intake on that. Um, I wouldn't... In my personal opinion, I wouldn't, I wouldn't can Judgment Day, but at least just yet. But I do understand eventually it's go. probably going to have to happen. Oh, yeah. We'll have to wait and see how things turn out because, well, with Dominic Mysterio added in, he's now joined the emo chat looking like Peter Parker and Spider-Man 3. See, I wasn't the only one who thought that. <laughs> <laughs> Except he doesn't have the charm of Tobey Maguire. Nope, but he ever will. Yeah. Anyways. Actually, no, no, now I think about it, he's Tom Holland Spider-Man if he ever became Bully Maguire. Pretty much. Because honestly, no disrespect to Tom Holland, but I don't think he could ever pull that off. No, nobody can. He's going to pull it off as Spider-Man, but, you know, not Bully Maguire. Nobody's pulling up Bully Maguire except Bully Maguire himself. Yep. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, we're going to move on now to the next match. The next match... Was another great match. Then again, almost all, pretty much all the matches were great. Oh, for real. That is Matt Riddle versus Seth freaking Rollins. And how great is it that we can say Matt Riddle again? Funny enough, Christian, I think they removed the freaking from Seth's name. So nah, he's still I Seth freaking Rollins. Huh, weird. I thought they removed it from it. That's weird. Anyways, well, hey, here's, the, hope, really here's the hope and they do remove it because that's just horrible. It's stupid. Matt it's so stupid. But it's a good thing, like, names like Matt Riddle, Austin Theory, and more recently, Tommaso Ciampa are back. I don't mind calling I, just, I don't mind calling him Ciampa. No joke. I still call him Ciampa. I used to call him Ciampa way back in the day. I don't really use the Tommaso name. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, Seth but Rick and Rollins <laughs> took on Matt Riddle in a match that was extremely personal because, you know, Seth brought up Matt's family and everything. And, you know, Matt did the same thing. Yes. But yet... Yes. No offense to them, but the match didn't exactly perform like it was a personal feud. No, all Seth did was basically get Matt Riddle to get pissed, then he capitalized on it. Yep, but hey, Seth won a match 
one on one by pinfall and pay per view for the first time since he beat Cesaro in t- June of 2021 at Hell in a Cell. That means Seth has gone this year till then with losses. That's his only win. Anyways, his, only, his only win this year on pay per view was a disqualification win against Roman Reigns. Yes. By the way, rematch, please. Yes. I mean, they just had a lot At of Survivor on Series. <laughs> On the 10-year yes. anniversary of the Shields debut. In a ladder match. Please. And besides, if they're trying to go by the Raw versus SmackDown thing, that'll work. Seth's on Raw, Roman's on SmackDown. Ding, 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 ding. There you go. But also, did you like how Seth Rollins dressed like Elton John? <laughs> that was just his curry, man. No joke. Yeah, and Matt Riddle dressed like Patrick Starr. Oh, yeah, for real. Yeah, the moment I saw those designs, I was like, wait a minute. It's really good. But there is some, there is a little bit of a nitpick I wanted to put on here. What you got? I would have preferred, I understand, like, I understand, like, you know, Matt Riddle, when he goes to the ring, he's always on a scooter and he kicks a foot floss. But because he is so pissed off and full rage and pr- to wants to practically kill Seth Rollins, he should have been just storming to the ring with no scooter or flip flops on. Should just thrown the scooter. Yeah, just uh, been pissed off the whole time. Just heading to the ring. Doesn't even pose or anything. He's like, come on, get your ass out here. Exactly. But yeah, Seth Rollins dressed like Ellen John. I can understand that Ellen John's going through his farewell tour. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, Ellen John, legend. Oh, for real. I would rec- I highly recommend going, go watch the biopic film Rocket Man. There you go. It was a good movie. Nice. I love musical biopics like Bohemian Rhapsody and Rocket Man, and more recently Elvis. Did you get a chance to see that, Willie? Nope, not yet. You should. The Elvis movie's good. Sweet. <laughs> All right. Um, Seth Rollins got the win with. Here's the thing. He pissed off Matt to the point where Matt got out of a chair and tried to hit him with it. That didn't work, so we got a curb stomp. And then a second curb stomp, except uh, Seth leaped off the second rope. That I'm going screamed out, a super curb stomp! Holy heck! I won't lie, I thought Matt was going to counter that one. Surprise! I was same here, actually. But the one thing, of course, that always irritates me is... Um, I understand Seth Rollins, you know, adopted the pedigree, but he's, it's been treated like it's a regular move. Yeah, we're way past the Triple H era. Well, not Triple H era, but we're way past the era with you, Seth. So, please drop that. Or at least if you're going to use it, it should still finish off your opponents. Exactly. Because the pedigree is still one of the coolest moves I've ever seen. And the most protected finisher. So, yeah, treat we respect. Yeah. I'll be honest, I still give credit that the end of days is still one of the most protected finishers. Oh, it is. He got, kicked out of, angel. got kicked out of only one time, and that was by Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania. But that's it. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> so, um, overall, what was your thoughts on the match with Seth and Matt? Very physical, very violent at times. I really hope there's a rematch, honestly. Um, kind of shocked Seth got the win, kind of. Uh, cause I have Riddle going into it, but I got it wrong. So, all right, fair enough. I loved how Seth basically just capitalized on Riddle's anger, and um, that was probably the best part of the match. Um, there were so many combos in this match. It was very physical, very violent, very wrestling based, and that's what I love about Triple H's new era is that he's focusing on the wrestling, he's also focusing on the character aspect of it. And um, this match really showed it. And um, it being the co-main, I was like, oh, nice. It delivered, it really delivered, and uh, I'm also I don't su- think they're done. I'm also surprised that, you know, Seth managed to actually connect to Bro Derek on Riddle. Exactly. Yeah. Although I won't lie, when I first th- saw that, I thought he was just channeling Cesaro with a the neutralizer. Then realized, oh wait, that's the Bro Derek! <laughs> At that moment, <laughs> I was go. like, whoops. There you go. Huh. Alright, you ready to talk the main event? It's time for the main event. Yep. And that is the Undisputed Universal title match. Roman Reigns defended against Drew McIntyre. This is the match that we had said should happen at the UK event since it was first announced a year ago. 
Yes, sir. Who was right? We were right. Yep. We also said that Drew should win the championships. Who was right? Not us. No, we weren't right. No, we were not right at all. I won't lie. When that happened, Roman Reigns won the match, folks. And I won't lie. I was asking myself, now what? Because I, I seriously didn't <laughs> I, know. I, I didn't know laughed. how this was going to go. I just laughed when Roman won. I was like, okay. All right. I didn't lose my mind. I just started laughing. I'm like, they actually did it. They actually freaking had Roman beat Drew in front of his people. And I honestly thought that there was no way Drew could lose, especially since he had that amazing entrance, bring it back his original theme music for a while. Broken dreams and all that. Well, not the whole thing, but just the intro of it. Came out and all I bet, like, everyone was saying he's going to get a special entrance. All he did was come up with broken dreams, and that's it. He didn't really do anything special. I'm honestly shocked in yeah. the UK of all places. He was just wearing his ring gear and didn't even have so much as a kilt on. He didn't have his kilt, no bagpipes, no nothing. It was I just regular Drew McIntyre with Angela. I won't lie, I expected the sword, but I didn't. I honestly thought he would also wear a kilt or maybe wear the uh, Scottish war paint at Channel Braveheart. Exactly. There was literally nothing. Nothing. Ugh. It's like he left his stuff uh, back in the United States or something. That wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> so funny. But I will say the match, the match, the match really itself good. was so good. I enjoyed that very much. There was like so many counters, some Superman punch counters, the Future Shock DDT counters, Guillotine counters, Claymore counters, Spear counters. There was so many kickouts too. Like God, I was, I was. Oh my gosh, the kickouts in this match were freaking out of this world. Like. Spear, kick out, Claymore, kick out. I'm like, holy crap, is it gonna end? Like the ref bump happened with Charles Robinson. I'm like, oh shoot, it's time it's time, it's the it's over. Like <laughs> it's the Claymore, the ref's down and stuff. It was just the bananas. The ending of it, which we'll get to in a sec, was insane. And of course my man Cross was right ring sign. He threw a freaking water bottle at Drew. I started busting out laughing. I'm like, bro. I honestly thought to myself that I was like, wow. Karen Cross made all made this long trip to Cardiff just to look at Drew and throw a bottle. He didn't even interfere in the match. He just sat there by ringside. And he's like, you want to go? You want to go? All he did was just strap uh, Drew, and that was it. Roman didn't acknowledge him, which was funny. Yeah. Fine time, no. <laughs> but Roman did yeah, uh, demand that Cardiff acknowledge him. Yeah, he did. He grabbed the freaking mic. He's like, Cardiff, acknowledge me. It was so funny. Acknowledge me. Turned around. Glasgow kiss. <laughs> Glasgow kiss, yep. Was this match was all over the place? There was what I liked bumps. about this is, crazy. despite the fact that Roman had hit two spears on Drew, Drew still had not hit a single claymore for a little while. Exactly. That's why I was getting hope. I'm like, I'm actually gonna do it. I'm gonna pull it off. <laughs> yep. And then, of course, like you mentioned, the referee accidentally got knocked down when Drew hit the first claymore on Roman. Yes. Yep. And that's when Austin Theory mm -hmm. came out. And I'm thinking, here comes the Usos, here comes the Usos. Nope, my man Theory comes out. Yeah, so I'm, I'm over here marking out and stuff. He's going to cash in. Guys, I, I cannot wait for Austin Theory to cash in. That's my guy. I'm very excited for the future and what's going to happen to him. So he started, he started coming down the freaking ramp. I'm over here getting excited. I'm like, oh, Theory, let's go. Tyson Fury knocks this dude out. And I think legitimately because, oh, my gosh. Yeah, Tyson Fury yeah, is, is well, one Woo. of the most violent boxers in recent memory. Yes, still still undefeated in boxing for many years, champion for many years. Hey, he just retired from boxing too, so. Oh yeah. really? Yeah, he just retired from boxing. Hey. A few weeks ago. Hey, you know what? I'd be down for him to take on Austin Theory at Crown Jewel. I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're going to try and get Tyson Fury involved in some matter. I know, I understand, folks, Triple H may be in command, but that doesn't mean he's going to, like, steer away from having special performances. Yes, sir. Because it's about the money. It's always about the money, 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 money. Anyways. Let's get Shane McMahon back here. <laughs> yeah, please, no. No. Uh, so, yeah, Austin Theory tried to cash in the contract, and he's really trying to recreate the heist of the century moment. Soon, very, very soon. I won't lie, I don't even think he's going to do a heist of the century moment. Oh, you don't think so? No, I don't I don't think it's going to happen in the midst of a title match in the main event on pay-per-view. 
I think it'll happen when somebody wins a championship. Then Cody! Because <clears throat> on height. Exactly. I thought it's something in my, in my, in my throat. WrestleMania! <clears throat> Anyways. That's <laughs> more than one royal family. Exactly. Whatever exactly. that was. I don't know. Royal Rumble! Jesus, I think we're both getting sick. Yeah, we're sick. We're <laughs> sick, Christian. We're getting <laughs> sick. Something's, <clears throat> something's wrong here. <clears throat> Roman versus Rock! Uh. Yeah. <clears throat> Cody, Cody drew in that one. <clears throat> Yeah, I understand. <coughs> I had sex with somebody. I mean, what? I mean, well, yeah, well. <laughs> well, I'm not going. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just want to make a funny joke out of this. Um. So yeah, because of the Austin Theory getting knocked out, we kind of figured, you know, okay, now's our chance. Um. Exactly. R McIntyre hit a second claim on Roman Reigns. At that moment, you know, the referee that Austin brought out brought out just went ahead and started counting. Yep. So that's when we were like, that's it, that's it. No. He kicked out. Like, the refs are right now. I'm, I'm over here getting excited. I'm like, here comes the ref. One, but what I also two, liked, no. what I also liked is Drew performed a spear on Roman. Yeah, and, and I'm over here, like, again, like, he goes, gets the spear, gets up, hits the more One, two, and, and then. All of a sudden, yeah. the referee gets yanked out of the ring. And I'm like, it's the Usos. It's the Usos. Well, it was an Uso, but I was like, I was like, yeah, it's one of the Usos. It's probably Jay because Jimmy has this DUIs and he can't be here. Exactly. But then all of a sudden, no, it wasn't either of them. It was Solo Sokoa. No joke. Why didn't I? Why? Why the heck didn't I think that was happening last week? Yeah, <laughs> the Usos' younger brother. I'm not gonna lie. I'm excited to see him alongside the Usos now. That is going to be interesting as heck. Yeah. Hey, if, if, if WWE ever does cross promotions with AEW, they can challenge the trio's titles. Please, yes. <laughs> um, as a result of this, you know, uh, Solo hung up Drew on the ropes and then Roman performed a final spear and got the win. One, two, I'm just, I'm laughing because, like, one of my good friends, one of my good friends, shout out to that homie, by the way. Big Drew fan, right? So, when Drew, can't stop laughing at this. When Drew got... Drew got pinned. My homie legit left the, left the call we and he was so pissed off. And the other friend, uh, other friend who was in the call with us, he was so mad. He did not, he did not speak for like I'm not even joking. Like I think two hours. He was so pissed, and, and he says he's never forgiven Triple H ever for this moment. <laughs> he doesn't care when Roman loses the belts. He's never forgiving Triple H for this moment ever. Well, I mean, what if what if it's still the Drew McIntyre though? Will we forgive him then? I don't think so. <laughs> he's, he's so pissed. At this he's. I told him yesterday. I'm like, dude, you gonna forget Triple H? He's like, no, never. And I'm like, okay. Well, folks, that's <laughs> gonna be so bad. That's gonna be the mystery of a lifetime. Now, will Triple H yeah, be is. forgiven? Find out next time. I I don't think so, folks. Honestly. <laughs> After the match Honestly, ended, man. I'm not going to lie. You know, Tyson Fury entered the ring. I thought he was going to try and knock out Roman. I thought Roman was going to perform a spear on Tyson. I was like, okay, here we go. And then all they did was shake hands. And I'm like, huh? What? Okay. Yeah, all, Roman was just cool with it. Walks out with Solo. And um, then they, Tyson yeah. turns to Drew. And I thought, oh, wait a minute. I see what's happening here. Here they, comes the Glasgow kiss, the Claymore. Yeah, I was thinking they no. have been teasing fighting each other for a while. Yeah, well, but yeah, then, and then that didn't happen. But then no, he uh here's the thing. He this is a UK thing, I understand that, but I'm just saying, like I understand, you know, singing songs to try and uh, send the crowd home ha home happy is one thing, but that did not need to air, I'm sorry. Apparently it wasn't supposed to air. Oh, it wasn't? Nope, it was not supposed to air apparently. Oh shit. They forgot. They forgot to turn the freaking stream off. No joke. You know that's apparently what happened. Yeah, here's the thing. Because it, it was constantly going on, we still have our eyes fixed on the TV because we think someone's gonna show up. That's what I was thinking. I did I was like, okay, the show's still going on. Here we go. Nope. They started singing. I'm like, huh? What the heck? That's it. It's over. And then the show ended. I'm like, what the? I'm like, what was that? Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, I was just too pissed off on the result of Roman Reigns constantly needing the results of needing uh, the bloodline to help him win oh, to yeah. even give a crap about these songs. It's not because I'm from the UK. I'm not from the UK. Of course. But here's Actually, the thing, there's a lot of people who's also from the UK. They probably just didn't care at that point. 
they're probably like, yeah, Drew's going to sing, and that's probably it. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Actually, Christian, if we if you mind switching over a quick sec, I actually have a friend who was at the show, right? Now, she has, I know we haven't done this in a while, but yeah, she has a few questions for us. These are a lot, but I'm not going to answer all of them. All right. But she has a few questions for the losers. Now, shout out to my friend Selfie, by the way, who's a really good friend of mine. She says, there's a few questions she has. I'll answer probably three of them. She says, thoughts on Dominic's heel turn and him joining the Judgment Day? Honestly, I think that's what's best for his career at the moment because, you know, the one thing I've been uh, saying for the longest time is Dominic Mysterio needs to get uh, out of the shadow of his, of his father. You're a bad father, Ray! Shout out to Finn Balor. <laughs> I agree, too. Um, I really think Dominic needs his own freaking character because, let's face it, he is bland as hell. <laughs> No offense to the guy, but you are bland and boring and just not interesting. So the fi you finally have your own identity, which is great. You know, join Judgment Day, and they're implying something that I'm not going to repeat on this channel, and I'm only a Christian demonetized or fired, <laughs> or myself fired. So I'm not going to say it, but just really think in your mind. Really think in your mind, folks, about what Rhea Ripley basically said this past week about Dominic, and just think about it, and I'm not going to say anything else. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, that's my opinions on that. She also says, um, do, 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 let me see. Oh, here's one. Uh, do you agree with the outcome of the main event of Clash? I'm 50 50 on it. I, um, I do not, eh? I do not agree with it. No, it's not what I would no. have wanted. I would have preferred to Drew McIntyre finally win the championship in front of a crowd, especially in his home crowd in the United Kingdom. There was no perfect exactly. way, no perfect place, and no perfect person to do it. Especially since they've been keeping Drew as far away from Roman as possible for the better part of those two years when he was champion. Yes, sir. I agree so with that, too. That's why I'm like, this, ha this has to be the moment. This has to be it. Yeah, for real. We, we were building this up for months. We were, me and Chris kept saying, okay, it's time. Drew McIntyre's going to be the one. I freaking threw it out. We both threw it out last year. Drew's going to be the one. Drew's going to be the one. Yeah, I was like, nope. We're just like, Drew's got to be the one, either at WrestleMania 38 in Dallas or, if not that, then the UK event. Neither nope. happened. Neither happened. Wonder who they're saving it for. <laughs> Cody. Anyways. Yeah. No, no disrespect, but if it's gonna be the Cody Rhodes, first off, uh, I really hope the rumors are not true about the potential Roman Reigns versus Cody at WrestleMania. I'm like, no, Roman's got to face The Rock. That's why I implied a few minutes ago, Chris, that I think night one, I think Cody's gonna win the Rumble, and then they're gonna do night one. The main event's gonna be Cody and Roman. Roman's gonna lose the titles. And then the next night could be the Rock and Roman. That's where Roman gets his win. Yeah. So Roman basically made it both nights of Mania. Yeah, in my opinion, that's just horrible. That's a terrible that's idea. Like, what needs to happen now, if we're going to switch gears, then I would recommend having Seth Rollins be the one to take it from Roman. Survivor Series. Yeah, Survivor Series. Uh, Cody wins the Rumble. We have Cody and Seth Part 4 and Mania. That's a match, honestly, I want to see as once again at WrestleMania. Exactly. That's the type of match where it deserves one another one at Mania. It does. It does. And poor Seth Rollins will lose the game. <laughs> poor Seth Rollins. I feel so bad for the band. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she says, one more. I'm answer one more. Okay. She says, where is it? Would you like? Would you want an event like Clash to happen yearly in the UK? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Apparently Triple H hinted at that. Apparently this might be a regular thing going forward. Well, I mean, Good. I mean, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't name all their events Clash the Castle because, you know, Cardiff yeah. is a castle. Is it by a, is it by a castle and everything? Um, exactly. I would think that, you know, if they're going to do stadium events in the UK every year, um, you should try other places. Go to maybe Wembley Stadium in London at some point. Maybe yes. uh, go to Ire Ireland. Maybe... Plus we got Scotland. Go to Scotland yeah. as Scotland, well. Scotland, yeah. There's a lot of places, Europe. you know. Europe, yeah. There's a lot of places you could do that, and um, yeah, I would really oh, think yeah. that'd be a great idea for them because um, this this gives them more opportunities for people to actually experience the pay per views. Because you know we got people in Saudi Arabia; they got two pay per views a year already because of their contract. I like the idea where they're going here. Mm -hmm. I also like how Triple H has also hinted at other you know overseas pay per views, like he hinted. A potential return to Australia and also a potential debut in India. Now, could you okay, imagine the Mahal is going to main event? Yeah. <laughs> no, probably not. But could you actually imagine, you know, a big stadium event in India and there's a lot of Indian fans over there in that one billion uh, populated place? 
I think the world's biggest stadium is in India. I think it is, yeah. If that is the case, definitely perform a show there. Yep. I guarantee it would sell out. And if I'm wrong, well, they, feel free to give me shit. <laughs> yes, it is, actually. That is, yeah. I really yeah, think... the world's biggest stadium is in the, India. Okay, do it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind, you know, a pay-per-view event in India, in, uh, Australia. I like where they're going with the idea, expanding the ideas, especially since, you know, we're going to talk about another expansion in a moment right after we're done talking about this. But I sure. like the idea that they do future pay-per-view events in countries that never exactly got a chance. Like here, oh, here's real, the, uh, this might be an interesting one. Uh, how about uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil? Because that's the place. Oh, that's the place where the Intercontinental Championship was first uh, crowned. Yes, sir. Was it there? I don't know. Was it Rio de Janeiro for the Intercontinental title? I think it was. Or was that the WWE title? I don't know. Fuck. I think it was one of the others. <laughs> Let me take a look. Oh yeah, it was the Intercontinental title. That's where Pat Patterson won in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Wow, there you go. That is absolutely insane. That's really spectacular if you really think about it. You know, I'd love to see them get to Africa. That'd be really good. Yeah, um, I really think that would be another great, great idea for a future paper event. Like, you know, the fact that Triple H is a lot more open to doing these things than, no offense, Vince ever was. Yeah, no offense, Vince. But at the same time, you know, also maintaining, you know, the Saudi deal. Obviously, I did not expect Triple H to, you know, say, hey, fuck the Saudi deal, right? Because, you know, it's mo it's like money. Am I it's the a great... who likes the Saudi shows? Like, I don't, I don't mind yeah, it's a great one. It's a great deal because, like, you know, there's never mm -hmm. been a bad thing. I understand there was that one time they were had, like, uh, tr travel delays. But I'm like, I don't want to hear shit about travel delays. Because after WrestleMania this year, I was stranded in Dallas for a whole day. Dang. <laughs> that's actually that's actually true, folks. Wow. I was delayed. Crazy. I was delayed and canceled and rescheduled and put here and then put there so many times. I was so fucking pissed off. Hey, dude. But that was not Dallas, Texas's fault. Just like Saudi Arabia wasn't at fault for what happened. You know, of on the travel delays after Crown Jewel 2019. Exactly. So that's <laughs> that's why I'm saying, like, you know, travel delays in airports, that, is, that happens. A lot of people get it worse. Sure does, man. Sure so, does. Um, honestly, so, honestly, you know, I need to go. Yeah, I need it's, a, like, it's one of those things where it's like... I'm just going to sit. Is it the thing? <laughs> I'm going to get to... We're going to get to, like, the next uh, two events in a moment. I just want to take this moment worry, and... Uh, I just want to take this moment and look at the map. I'm opening up my Google Maps really quickly because the reason I'm doing that... Oh, there you go. ...is I want to actually see, you know, what other locations would be a great idea for, you know, for pay-per-views. As soon as this damn thing loads up. Just give me a moment, folks. All right. All good, brother? All right. How about Mexico? Ooh, Mexico. Good one. There's a lot of cool things like Italy. That's another one. Oh, there you go. Good one. It's honestly like uh, cool to me to think that, you know, you mentioned before Africa, right? Are you talking South yes, Africa? Sir. Are you talking um, Egypt? Oh, Egypt. How cool would Egypt be? <laughs> Egypt. Do inside the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> and no, not the pyramid in Vegas, guys. I'm talking like a legit pyramid. Like you know, they call it out freaking no um, the 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 fight by the Nile or whatever. I don't freaking know. Yeah, <laughs> Italy, know. France, you oh, know, Spain. Yeah, Poland. do something to the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, India I think would be a fantastic so place for WWE to host a pay per view in the future. For real, you about, see them doing it. How about North Korea? Let me stop there. Yeah, um, I don't think the leader of North Korea would be very um, happy with no. this. No. <laughs> we don't want another collision in Korea moment, right? No, we don't. No, we don't. How about Japan, honestly? Um, um, I mean, I get uh, New, ja New Japan's um, got the market. I understand that. But, you know, WWE's hosted many events there. There was that time they did host a pay-per-view there in 2015. The Beast in the East. Ah, uh, yes, when Finn Balor won the NXT title. Good good times. Oh, yeah, by the way. Yeah, good times, good times. But I can see it. 
do the Tokyo Dome. Do a crossover with New Japan. I don't freaking care. I don't know if that's going to But Triple H and Dry, I think anything's possible. I really do. If I'm being perfectly honest, the one place where I think they definitely should host an event is Hawaii. That's not a country, obviously. That's uh, in the United I States. That's in the United States, folks. But, the, but still, you know, Hawaii... When is the last time WWE exactly hosted even a live event there? I think it's been a long time. Do it balls you move and do something in Antarctica. <laughs> I don't even think they have a, a freaking stadium built over there. Well, we can well we can just wrestle in the snow. Okay, we'll start okay. Up, we'll or, do a lot. or better yet, wrestle in the North Pole. And we'll the the Santa Claus is the let's have Santa Claus is the referee at the North Pole. They can do that around Christmas time. Yeah, it works. <laughs> <laughs> all right There's folks so many possibilities man <laughs> all right folks well that's clash at the castle for you and also talk about where they could definitely hold Sorry. future events in the future we still got two events to go but that's all right We're... oh i want to get my i'll get i'll get my rating on clash at the castle i really gave the show an eight out of ten i really did i gave it a nine eight out of ten there you go i just thought it really deserved it all right we're gonna move on to the next event and the next event was nxt worlds collide when huh. worlds collide, you can. Uh, anyways, um. When worlds collide, it's a curious thing. But you never heard a robot in a caveman sing. Robot in a caveman sing. <laughs> no joke, I thought that was going to be the theme song for the show. Yeah. I legit thought that was going to be the theme song for the show. Worlds collide. Oh that my was, god. Yeah, this was, um, this was the last event for NXT UK. As of this moment, folks, it is officially, like, you know, been put on hiatus. So that's because, like we mentioned, we mentioned there's another expansion we quickly talk about. Uh, we're going to get to that right at, right before we talk about what happened at the show. And that's because, you know, NXT UK has become an NXT Europe. It is. And I like what Triple H had even said. You know, remember how he was being interviewed pl prior to Clash at the Castle? And he was he had, in the press conference. Yeah, and yeah. what I also like is he wants the idea of having, you know, NXT named after, you know, different countries... <laughs> And he even brought up NXT. Yeah. He he even brought up NXT South Africa. Yes, sir. Um, NXT Australia, India. Honestly, I think Africa, there should be. An, I, I, think, I think there should be an NXT Canada. Oh, for dude, yeah, for real. Because here's the thing: I get the, NXT everywhere. <laughs> I mean, I get that you know you can have like you know those NXT those wrestlers from Canada come down to the NXT USA and everything, but. To have, like, imagine oh, yeah. how cool would it be if WWE set up their own performance center in Toronto? Yes, please. And then, well, if I'm trained enough, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to actually try to apply. <laughs> there you go. Not going to lie, I think I would actually do that. <laughs> but Sweet. To, I like the idea of this because, you know, this was Triple H's initial vision of everything, right? This is what he wanted. Yes, he, sir. He, he started up NXT UK. With the idea that, like, you know, countries worldwide deserve a chance to, you know, compete in this, like, style of wrestling and everything. And I understand, you know, if you have all this that is uh, so true. NXT, this place or that place, I understand if, you know, not all of it's going to be televised. I wouldn't expect that. Because, you know, there's not enough for that. Yes, sir. But what I'm saying is, like, this would be a great idea to develop talent and then bring them in to the main stage. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so I'm really hoping this is going to become a thing but you know NXT Europe is honestly the start of all that because well he's named NXT after the damn continent yeah for real that means wrestlers from all over the entire continent of Europe can be part of this mm -hmm. it's not just the UK it's also <laughs> Italy it's also Spain it's also France it's also uh, Belgium, mm -hmm. freaking Bulgaria. Yes, sir. <laughs> My God. Next team, Bulgaria. That'd be interesting. Yeah, I'll be honest. Here's the thing, Bulgaria. Really seen, interesting. I see what that place looks like. It looks nice. Hey, and Bulgaria got us Rusev. Yes, sir. Or Miro. Just kidding. It's Miro. <laughs> that joke died a year ago. Yeah, it did. Just like his <laughs> AEW career. Anyways. <laughs> oh, you just had to put that one in. <laughs> yes, I did. Okay. Um, 
NXT Worlds Collide took place um, hour, mere four hours before AEW All Out took place. And shockingly enough, that somehow pissed off Tony Khan. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> we'll get to that, folks. Don't you worry. Yeah. Um, five matches took place, and three of them were title unifications. The one thing, of course, that was not uh, were the NXT mm -hmm. Women's Tag Titles and the North American title. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're going to start things off with that, actually. The NXT North American title match. Carmella Hayes taking on Ricochet. That was match of the night. Yeah, it was. That was, match went on for over 15 minutes, but it was so fast. It was so furious. And a lot of people disagreed by it ending in a quick roll-up. But in my opinion, the match was so fast and furious that a fast and furious style ending <laughs> was the best way to do it. Just invite Vin Diesel to the match, then we'll be then we'll be complete. And the Rock. Yeah, then we'll be all a bit one big happy family. Exactly. I mean, isn't that what it's all about? Yeah, it's all about family. <laughs> Fuck yeah. everything else. It's just about family. And hey, NXT is. is supposed to be a family anyway, so Exactly. Here we are. We're all here. And I like the it's idea with here. the expansion of potentially NXT Europe coming in twenty twenty three. Man, twenty twenty three can't come any faster. Two although, months away. Although, actually, it is coming really fast. It's coming yeah, faster no, than Veer Mahan. <laughs> wherever, the, wherever the heck he is. Yeah, what the hell happened to that guy? He's apparently being prepped for something. I don't know. What the hell happened to Omos? Who? Oh, oh yeah, Omos. Um, sorry, folks, I got blinded for a bit. Oh, yeah, I'm starting to think, yeah. Know. A lot of those guys are probably Where not going to be around anymore. Who uh, the heck is Omos? <laughs> Uh, Carmelo Hayes, when he took on Ricochet for the North American title, um, the moment it was Fast and Furious action at the start, I just knew we were in for a treat. Oh, yes. Fast. It was awesome. It was amazing. And not to mention, perfect timed athleticism. Dude, and I know people say, oh, this is not professional wrestling. I mean, for me, at least. <laughs> well, it wasn't professional. I'm doing the quotes, ladies and gentlemen. Can't well, it's not professional wrestling. It was that their, their version of wrestling, and you know, if as long as you, if you, yeah, I know it's all choreographed. I get that, but you know, for me, you, know, you guys, you know, guys, suspend the disbelief, all kind of stuff in wrestling. And for me, at least, that stuff right there, you know, give me a few minutes, just really enjoy it. I really did enjoy Ricochet and Carmelo Hayes. They just went out there and freaking killed it. They didn't waste a single second. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the main event of day one this year. You know, when Brock Lesnar won the WWE title. That five-way match was only eight minutes long, but they didn't waste a damn second. They didn't. <laughs> That's why it worked, in my opinion. I could still go back and yes, watch sir. that match and be like, oh my god, what a match. Seriously, dude. Carmelo Hayes retained the North American title by means of a inside cradle when, you know, um, he moved out of the way when Ricochet attempted to hit a shooting star press. Mm -hmm. uh, Trick Williams got involved a couple of times, but the one thing that kind of uh, irritated me was Ricochet was easily distracted by Trick, even when Trick wasn't doing anything. Yeah, for real. And I was like, dude, stop yelling at him. Just focus on Carmelo. Like, it was that difficult mm -hmm. to do that? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> overall, did you like this match? I did. Like I said it was very fast paced, very um, well choreographed. And again, I know you're supposed to dis suspend your disbelief, which I, which is what I did during the match. And um, I, I really enjoyed it for what it was. It's just one of those things where I like. I love fast paced wrestling. I love the ground and pound match style of wrestling. I just like everything. So this match had pretty much everything that I wanted. So yeah, really good match. Right winner too. So Ricochet came in and put over the new talent. Good yeah. stuff. Indeed. Uh. Mm -hmm. And even despite Trick Williams getting involved a couple of times, he was not the key factor in Carmelo Hayes retaining the title. Correct. That's what I like about it. Maybe the Bloodline should do that if they want to get involved. Hey. All right, we're going to move on to the next match. This was a fatal four-way elimination match to unify the NXT Tag Team titles and the NXT UK Tag Team titles. Four teams, two representatives from NXT USA and two representatives from Actually, technically, uh, I don't know if... Yeah, there technically was, I guess, two representatives of NXT UK. Yeah. 
Yep, makes sense. The champions, uh, well, the two sets of champions. The for NXT USA, that was the Creed Brothers. And they were also represented in NXT USA, and that was pretty deadly. For NXT UK, the tag champs Brooks Jensen and Josh Briggs and Gallus. And boy, we thought it was going to come down to the Creed Brothers and Gallus. Yeah, and it didn't. No, sadly. The pretty deadly <laughs> made history that night. And I rolled my eyes. Pretty really? deadly not only won both sets of titles, but they broke the Undisputed Era's record. They're the only team in NXT to have won four tag team titles. Okay, great. Hearing that makes me sick. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing that makes me freaking sick to my stuff. I'm not a pretty deadly fan, so I don't hate them or anything. I just, they're not my kind of thing. So, them winning, I just, I, I, I just groaned and rolled my eyes and just... No, <laughs> I didn't like it at all. Congratulations. Ellen Prince, Prince and Kit Wilson. I will admit, they kind of look like a combination of Tyler Breeze, Von Dango, and John Morrison. The one with brunette hair looks like Seth Rollins without his goatee and beard. Yeah, <laughs> that's Kit Wilson. Ellen right, Prince is the one who looks like J Tyler Breeze. <laughs> he does. I could have swore that was him. He ain't doing anything anyways. Bring him back. Hey, put Brizongo back in and have them face pretty deadly. See how that turns out, huh? Well, Fandango's retired, but I'm sure you know he can come out of retirement for that. I'm going on that. Yeah, it's, pro, it's pro wrestling. Nobody's ever retired. Exactly. Rick Flair, anyways. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't even get me started on that. I don't even want to talk about that piece of shit. <laughs> Thank God we didn't cover that show. <laughs> no. Um, so yeah, pretty, here's the thing. What I was surprised about... The match was 15 and a half minutes. The NXT UK tag champs, Brooks and Josh, they were eliminated in less than five minutes. Yeah, I, I was like, huh, okay. If they were that easy to beat, then how the hell did they manage to beat champs in the first place? Exactly. And you know, Gallus absolutely crushed them. Yeah, they did. But man, it sucks that Gallus got eliminated next. Yeah, that was a dumb decision. Gallus, in my opinion, should have won this. That's just me. Yeah, I was also on the side of that because I think that would have been amazing. They're honestly my favorite tag team from NXT UK. Been following them for a pretty long time. They're good. Longest They're reigning good. NXT UK tag champs. And I get that a lot of that was the pandemic, but even when they started competing right. again, they still retained. Even though Mark Coffey has lost a bunch of weight and he shrunk. So, yeah. I also like how they pose with their arms crossed on the stage and in the ring. When I see that, I think of Imperium. Hey, so they got yeah. In the back. That's a great theme music, huh? Hey, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Although, like, um, uh, pretty deadly. Here's the thing. Not only did they unify those titles, but they basically won back. They were the team that Creed Brothers beat to win those tag titles in the first place. Joy. Sarcastic Wonderful. joy. Amazing. I'm ecstatic. I'm happy. What's even I'm worse smiling is, from good What's even ear. worse is, you know, pretty deadly, they got Lash Legend with them, too, and that's just going to make things worse. Ugh. I don't it's even like the, I don't understand who, what the deal with Lash Legend is. It's because she's hot, apparently, and she has ass. That name okay, even, whatever. that name fucking sucks. No offense. It's like Nikita Lyons, which I don't get that, but I'm sure that's just me anyways. <laughs> yeah. No, so, no, no. that was unusual and weird. I mean, the match was good. Very, we were just disappointed with the outcome. Very stupid outcome. But we I just don't like pretty deadly people. I just don't. Here's the thing. We've been talking about the match and the outcome. We didn't talk about the important factor of how that happened. That was Damon Kemp turned on the Creed Brothers. Yeah, he did. So, now what the hell? Is he the one who attacked Roderick Strong? Either that or somebody else is behind it. <laughs> Like, who could that possibly be, Vince? No, 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 not Vince. All right, you got anyone in mind? He was undisputed before. He had a fish hook to him. <laughs> Bobby Fish. Ain't he signed with AEW, though? No, he's a free agent. Wait, 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 back up, back up, wait, wait, what? Bobby Fish is a free agent. He is done with AEW. He is free to do whatever he wants. Oh, shit, I didn't realize that. Yes, sir. So, what's the result of Undisputed Elite now? 
Oh, there. Oh, uh, Kyle O'Reilly's hurt, and the, we uh, we'll talk about the Bucks and Kenny later. Um, yeah, so Kyle O'Reilly's hurt. He has a uh, he had neck fusion surgery. We oh, won't see fuck. him until 2023, if that. Um, Adam Cole is. We don't know where Adam Cole is. He's apparently quote unquote still hurt. I don't believe that, but we don't know where Adam Cole is. He's on Twitch apparently. Oh yeah, with, Adam with Cole's always boys. on Twitch. You know, he's Chugs. That's Chugs. Chug Chugs. We love Chugs. Yeah. We love the party. Shout the party. Bring you to chill. Here's the thing. I understand that, you know, like the whole thing about what's going on with um with WWE and everything, but I think it would have been awesome if Adam Cole could still be part of the party on up, up down down. I think it's a possibility, honestly. Imagine them as a stable. You break up the new day <laughs> break up the new day and you spring the party as a stable. Yeah, and here's the thing, you can also have Claudio return there as well. After he loses the ROH World Championship, which is doing nothing with it. And anyways, we'll, we'll talk about AEW. I'm going to save my energy for AEW later. Yeah. I'm going to save my energy for AEW later. So I'm assuming Diamond Mine is not a thing anymore? I don't think so. Because Roderick Strong's in the hospital and... And Damon Kemp just, you know, turned on the Creed Brothers and cost them the tag titles. Yeah, so I guess it's just the Creed Brothers and Ivy Nile. And she's in a tag team. So I guess the I guess it is dead. Okay. All right, fun then. Well, it had a good run. It did. Next. Yep, the next match is a triple threat to unify the NXT Women's and NXT Ooh! UK Women's titles. And in this match, uh, we had, you know, Blair Davenport, Mako Satomura, yeah. and yeah. put some respect on her name, Mandy Rose! Put some respect on her freaking name, Mandy Rose. Indeed. That's what we always do. Champion. Oh, man. I will say, I, Mandy God. Rose returning to NXT was the best thing she did for her career. One more time, Chris. I need to hear it one more time so people can hear you. Oh, right. Sorry. Put some respect into her name, and Mandy Rose returning at NXT was the best thing for her career. Yes, it has been. She's doing so well. And again, I said this last week, week before. I will say it to the day I die. It's not because she's hot. She's improved so much in the ring. And I understand all the disdain towards Mandy. Let it go. Let it go. She's improved. She's worked her ass off. And she's doing so well, in my opinion. You might not like her. She's worked That's her, fair. She's worked her like ass her. off almost literally, if you know what I mean. Well, that's that That wasn't her ass. That was um another part of her. We'll, we'll get that. We'll get that. We'll get that. Um, <laughs> we're not PG show, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. I think y'all figured out by now. <laughs> but, um, it, I guarantee, oh, my I guarantee gosh, because man. I guarantee because I said that, people are going to be like, I thought Christian was gay. I am gay. Relax. He is gay. Relax. Chill, morons. Calm down. Oh, no, morons. Chill, chill, fans. Fans. Yes, we have, we have fans out there. We love you guys. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> but, um, man, it was really fun match. And, of course, you know, going into it, I was picking Blair Davenport, and she took the pin. I was like, okay. I was too ecstatic. I was so happy Mandy won. Like, and I legit let out the biggest laugh in my entire life because I, I, I was so happy. I'm like, yes, cry. Cry, haters. Keep crying. I know you were saying, no joke, Christian. Let me tell you something. Apparently, people think she's on top because, come a little bit closer to Christian. Come, come, let me tell you something in your ear. Uh -huh. Apparently, people think, it, think she's sleeping with Shawn Michaels. Oh, really? Yes, people think she's sleeping with Shawn Michaels to get to the top. Oh, she kind of looks exactly like his wife. Are you sure you didn't get confused? I think so. I, I think don't they're know. We, we may have to read. How the freaking heck is that possible? <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand that. Go ahead and say that, you know, someone's sleeping their way to the top. Well, here's... You want to know an example of someone who's literally sleeping his way to the top? That's Triple H. Exactly. That's and everyone's Triple loving H him for that. Exactly. Bingo. She's, she's not sleeping her way to the top, people. She's very talented. Yeah. She is. And she's worked her ass off for it. Who else she was to win this match? Mako Satomura? Nah. Nah. She was going to lose anyways. Blair Dabbor, I guess, you know, that was my pick. And I'm yeah, I was honestly under the I was under the impression that Blair was gonna be in the match as a way to you know uh, win both championships to unify them. That's what I thought too. But nope, Mandy Rose is the first woman to have won the NX to have combined the NXT and NXT UK titles. Rhea Ripley, of course, is you know the first woman to have previously won both sets of titles in the in the past. And he's also the last NXT Women's Champ. How does that feel? Yep. Also, she did a very hot photo shoot this past week, mimicking Shawn Michaels. Yeah, that's worth that, probably out. probably once again to shoot to everybody that was saying that she was sleeping with him. Fine with me. 
<laughs> I had fun with that. Anyways, um, yeah, uh, I will Anyways, say, um, <laughs> Mako Satomura, she impresses me a lot. She's got decades of, uh, 27 years, I believe, of experience in the ring. 25, apparently. That's what my, my homies told me, like, oh, 25, 25 years okay. of business. I'm like, what? She's that only 42. Long? What's that? 25 years of experience, and she's 42. She's the same age as Finn. Like, what the heck? And she can still go pretty good, just like Finn can. Yes, yes. So she's not taking those. Yeah, folks. Anyways, well, I will say the future looks that. bright. Like, the women's time match was okay. It was sloppy at some points, but, you know, they managed Very. to pick it up. They picked it up. There were there were literally spots. I'm not going to say. Well, I will say what spot. Mandy's boot popped out, basically. Yeah. And, <laughs> and had to go black for like a few seconds. It was pretty funny. But um, it was really back and forth, man. There were so many near falls in this match. Um, but, you know. My girl won. I had the biggest smile on my face. Started marking out and stuff. I started, you know, I was live, of course, doing live reactions. I literally turned to my camera. I'm like, suck on it, haters. Cry, moan, groan, do whatever you want. Because um, I'm, I'm so proud of her. And people are calling this the reign of terror, Christian. This is the reign of terror. <gasps> oh, no. Nah. I've seen Don't bigger I've down. seen bigger reign of terror. <coughs> Brick Baker. Yeah, Brick Baker. Exactly. Way bigger way way longer title reigns that are more horrible than this okay i'm just gonna ask this uh why is it when we talk about horrible things we get are we fucking allergic to bad title reigns i think we are a miracle yeah, i really we, think we, we are, we are. <coughs> brock lesnar <coughs> brock lesnar <coughs> <coughs> goldberg <coughs> exactly hey, do you got, oh my god do you got any nyquil I could use that right I now. I do. I do have Nyquil. Thank to put you. you to sleep a little bit later when we talk about another event. <laughs> nah, I think that's just... I think we're... We're probably going to lose our voices. But I'm just kidding. We're probably... We're going we're gonna to try our best for that. But in the meantime... Yep, yeah, Mandy yeah. Rose <laughs> uh, unified the titles. And, you know, she's still yes, NXT sir. Women's Champion. While the UK title has been retired. And I look forward yes. to seeing what's going on with her next. Um, I've been impressed with Mandy Rose very much. She won the title at Halloween Havoc last year. Yes, sir. And I will honestly think I can see her passing a year. I really think, Christian, if I don't know, she'll do it. But maybe she might break the record. I don't think she will, but she could. You never know. She kept name dropping people like Charlotte, Paige, even Asuka. I'm like, they usually do that for people who are going to break records. Look what happened with Roman. They name dropped everything that he's done. He won this match. So I wouldn't be surprised if Mandy Rose becomes the longest reigning NXT Women's Champ. Also, ladies and gentlemen, you got to remember there are some being built up for her. People are being built up for Mandy to be, to, to for her to beat, or no, not for Mandy to beat, for that person to beat Mandy. Roxanne, <coughs> WrestleMania next year. <coughs> well, NXT, NXT Mandy next year. But um, put some respect on her name, please. No, seriously, legit people. I get it. Y'all don't like Mandy. That's fine. She's not one's cup of tea. But at least acknowledge the fact she's done a good job as champion. At least. And I know it's all shenanigans and stuff she won because of that. She's a heel. She's well, a heel. That's the point. Well, her gimmick the is really you want to fuck her, and she's not going to let you do that. I thought I'd let you know as well. Like, if Mandy Rose is to defeat Asuka's record, she has to surpass WrestleMania week. She does. So let's, let's do this. Have her hold it till SummerSlam weekend. There we go. Much better. Um, but speaking, we mentioned Halloween Havoc, folks. That's a that's not going to be a TV special this year. That's going to be a pay per view. Yeah, it is. I'm like, ooh. Saturday, October twenty second. Mark it on your calendars. NXT presents Halloween Havoc. Yes, sir. Can't wait to talk about it. Yeah, that's going to be added into our list. And as a result of this, folks, this is our last podcast for this month. After this, you'll not see us for at least three weeks. But when we come back. You're going to see us for potentially nine weeks in a row. Yes, you will. Nine weeks of the losers. Yep. <laughs> I hope you're all right. Hope you're all right. In the meantime, yeah, Mandy folks. Rose is I'm happy. In the meantime, yeah. we're going to move on to the next match. There's not much to say about this, but it was okay. And that was the women's tag team titles. As Katana Chance I and Kaden Carter <laughs> defended against New, Dr- New Drop. What? <laughs> wait, wait. I just wait, said, I just said New said? Drop. I thought you were about to say new drop. <laughs> new, new drop and Dicky ASH. <laughs> Why the new hell did I say that? ASH. What the hell's wrong with me? 
like I said, folks, we are not PG. <laughs> Do drop the Nikki ass, 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 ass. There we go. The screwballs or whatever. And know the about. constant question <laughs> I have is, are they going to break up or not? I don't know. They're having what argument after argument, match after match, lose after lose. Sorry, loss after loss. And yeah. still nothing? It's so weird. I'm it just really going to say this. It was fun while it lasted, folks. But it was. Bring back Nikki Cross and bring back Piper Nibbin. Piper Nibbin. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Please. That'd be nice. We're begging you. Or well, Please. or if you know, if you want to keep the dude drop name, we can handle that. I'm fine with the dude drop name, but bring back Piper Nibble. Nibble. Neville. 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 What's Neville. wrong with you? Neville. <laughs> Neville. Well, he's he's in another company. Yeah, <laughs> wrong guy here. And now we're and also we ain't talking about Neville Papperman either. Of iCarly. No, we're not. iCarly, good show. Except the reboot. Re- reboot is decent. I I, I just I'll, after the first couple go. episodes, it just wasn't that good. But I get what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Katana Chance and Kaden Carter retained the women's tag titles. It looked. Uh, here's the thing. They retained them thanks to the interference of Toxic Attraction. Yes, they did. And I'm over here like, girls, why weren't y'all in the other match? <laughs> well, reports to where they were hurt, apparently, or one of them was hurt. But looks like she's Gigi. not hurt anymore. Yeah, Gigi's better. Good. I'm a happy boy. I guess they want to wait until Mandy Rose is done before going up to the main roster. Good. That'll be next year in 2023. Yep. Please. Mandy Rose shall lose the NXT women's title maybe on WrestleMania week and then show up on the Raw after with Toxic Attraction and they destroy everyone. Yes, they destroy uh, Control. And that'll be the new heel faction on the roster. I'm fine with that. Man. I'm cool Mandy with that Rose, thanks to uh, Raw Women's Champion. Please, yes. And give me her Becky Lynch. And and please give me um, Gigi Dolan and Becky Lynch. You know, honestly, oh, and re- JC James, too. Reignite, the, reignite the feud with Mandy and Sonya except with this new Mandy. You gotta get me to believe him. Uh, uh, I almost said Summer Rae, though. Um, Summer <laughs> Rae. Oh, I think it's Summer Rae. Call to me, it's call right. to it's me. Not long day, folks. God, her theme song sucks. Yeah. I don't know um, you too. But yeah, there's not much to say about the women's tie time match because let's be honest, it wasn't that memorable. I didn't even watch it, so I can't say anything about it. Oh, I saw, like, no joke. I get back in my room, right? And I'm, I'm literally just got to eat dinner when this happened. Get back in my room, the match is over. I'm like, Huh? Okay. Whatever. It's probably quick anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But Katana again retained the women's tag titles, and we're going to just move on to the main event. Yeah, and the main event was to unify the NXT title and the UK title, as Braun Breaker defended his title while Tyler Bate defended his. Tyler Bate? That's Arthur. That's that's Arthur. Or as I call him, British Jesus. <laughs> he, looks like, he looks like Jesus. He's British. I will admit, he does rock the long hair pretty good. He does. So when we saw this match, um, I thought it was amazing. I I honestly thought Tyler Bate was going to win this. I did too. Because they're making the, the week, they're making the away. huge deal about him being, you know, the last UK champ as he was the first. He was. Well, unfortunately, Braun Breaker now is the last. He is. And that's because, folks, Braun Breaker won the match, retained his NXT title, and won the NXT UK title. Unified them together, and I'll be honest. Do you this match? I like the back and forth stuff they did. Tyler Bay almost won several mom, time, several times, and yes, sir. Tyler Bay is an amazing competitor, as we've seen since he's the first ever UK champ, and he's had amazing bangers even with the other champions like Pete Dunne and Walter. Who's Walter? That's Gunther. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, what did you think of the main event? Uh man, first of all, I can't believe I'm older than both of these gentlemen. Like, no joke. We both are. And it's are. so strange. Yeah, we both are. Because and like they were Tyler the main Bates, event. Like, 24, 25. That should be us in the main yeah. event. Yeah, it should be. Loser against loser. Move I, these two over. I won't I won't lie, if we actually both got trained into wrestling, if we actually did manage to get a chance, I would totally face you in a match. There you go. We unify the Losers Lunch Championship. Anyways. <laughs> Whatever that is. No, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> but I really enjoyed the match, man. Um, It was, just, I don't know. It's just something about the young guys out there just doing their thing. It's crazy. It was very athletic. And, um, you know, props to both guys, man. Big, strong boy. 
And uh, Braun Breaker out there. Braun is, of course, one of my favorites in NXT. Um, so, yeah, some people say he's bland. I mean, fair enough. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think he's bland. He needs to work on his craft a little bit more. He's young. He's young. He's only 24 years old. Give him a chance. Um, I think, you know, I was, no joke, I was thinking he was going to lose because I thought he was going to get called up. But he won. I was like, okay. Good stuff. Good stuff, though. I really enjoyed point. the match. I'm going to say, like, I could see Braun Breaker being an entrant in the Royal Rumble match coming up. I will mark the hell out. Which, by the way, folks, that's been confirmed for San Antonio, Texas at the Alamo Dome. Boo. No, I'm kidding. No, that's awesome. Our fellow loser, Reister Ryan, is actually planning on being there. He is. So, I talked to Ryan recently. He's doing great, folks. Yep, I know you guys miss him, and hopefully we're gonna get a, we're gonna talk with him at some point and see if he feels like coming back at some point. Exactly. But, but if we he will. doesn't, it's okay. It's okay. We got the two man band right here. It's all good. <laughs> two MB. You're stuck with us. Two MB. You're stuck with the losers. We're, we're the losers. two man band. I think there is a group called the two man band. This might be copyright. Anyways. <laughs> yep. Huh. <laughs> well, overall, that's our review on uh, NXT Worlds Collide, and I will say I gave that one also a 9 out of 10. That where I stand, I stand right there with you as well, 9 out of 10. It's, it's just stuff. so amazing that they did a great job in this. It, it was, was. It was so great. We had, a, we had a great time with Clash at the Castle, and then that got us more excited for Worlds Collide, and we enjoyed that, and that got us all excited for what's coming up next. <laughs> <laughs> Little did we know what we were about to head into would have been very unfortunate. Dark territory. A very dark time for everything. Very, very dark. Grab your popcorn, folks, for this one because we are not going to be kind. We're not going to be kind. And some of the stuff you're going to hear from us, you are not going to like because. So, head of warning. Head of freaky warning. You're not going to like what we say with this show. Well, you might like some of the things, but. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, you might like some of it. Not on the old thing. Yeah, yeah uh. AEW All Out. We know last week when we predict the show, there was about we were talking nine matches. There's there was fifteen in total. Yes. And we did say yes. the one thing that was very like uh, exhausting and at the same time like uh, frustrating was the amount of matches they placed in. Fifteen. Fifteen mm. matches. Four on the pre-show, and eleven on the main show. Funny enough, it felt shorter than last year. Well, there's reasons why, actually, because some of the matches were cut short. Thank yeah. you, Tony Khan. This is that was a result of having too many matches on your card. Maybe the slowers, maybe slowers down, Tony. Yeah. Oh, and giggles. This is why I've always said, you know, pay per view should have eight to ten. That'd be fine. Eight exactly. at the minimum and ten at the max. Exactly. Just do 10 and leave it at that. I don't need to go all over the place. Everyone needs to be on the card and all that. Don't do that. Please don't. Yeah. It's annoying. AWL yeah. suffered from that, but it suffered from a lot of things as well when the show is <laughs> over, <laughs> which we'll get to in the main event. So that's kind of fitting that this is the main event. Did y'all, There's also something else I want to point out. Uh, <laughs> I feel bad for Wardlow and the TNT Championship. <laughs> Wardlow sucks as champion. It's not his fault. Because here's the thing. Every championship from AEW, aside from the TNT title, was on the line. The FTW title was on the line. And even a title from AAA was on the line. But not the TNT title. Poor Wardlow. Poor TNT title. Hasn't been defended on paper since last year's All Out. <sighs> And ever since then, every pay per view, every pay per view since then, the TNT champ was in a random trios match that, shockingly enough, as we have always said, did not need to fucking exist on the card. They're not listening, Christian. They don't listen to judgment. They never do. Mm -hmm. It always blows up on their ass. Exactly. Like a certain punk. Anyways, we'll get to that when we get to that. Well, at least the show started off really good. You know, there was the casino ladder match to kick it off. Yeah, but right. yeah, they this did not feel as exciting as any of the other ones. They didn't do anything. They didn't do anything they, cool. It's a they, la- it's a fucking ladder match. You had Claudio. Claudio didn't do a dang thing in this match. You had he Wheeler Yuta. You had Penta El Zero, Ray Phoenix, Roosh, 
Andrade and fucking Dante Martin all in the same match. And it's a ladder match. Oh, that's right. Dante Martin was in this match. I forgot. And they didn't do... Well, they did a few spots. I don't remember any. No, I don't really remember, remember much of anything at all. And that's because, you know, when the Joker showed up... before, Actually, before the Joker showed up, Stokely Hathaway and the other crew, like Ethan Page, Lee Moriarty, Colton Gunn, Austin Gunn, and W. Morrissey, can't teach that, were all, like, masked, uh, masked up and everything. And they... Well, Stokely climbed the ladder and hooked the poker chip before the Joker showed up. Yeah, the Joker. <clears throat> Anyways, um... The Joker showed up. He was still masked. Yeah, Joker, and he was yeah. literally handed over the fucking poker chip. And I'm like, this is this reminds me so much of the time when, what, James Ellsworth unhooked the Money in the Bank briefcase and dropped it to Carmella? Yeah, no joke. That's what, that's what I legit said. I'm like, what is this? This reminds me of that. I was like, okay, and then the Joker, MJF, walked off. Yeah, let's just really let's just flat out say it. Yes, good. folks, it was MJF. It was MJF. We all freaking knew it. Yeah, but the way he was walk, walking. The build, the walk, and he went to take his mask off, and I'm like, he's not going to reveal himself here. And he did, and he walked backstage. It was so funny. He even had, like, you could tell it was him. The hands and stuff, we knew who it was. It was MJF. He's got a, he's got a certain style on him. Yeah, he does. So, yeah, the match was okay. That's all I'm yeah. going to say about it. It was okay. It wasn't terrible, but I kind of thought to myself... I don't remember it. I kind of thought to myself, okay, okay, probably a little bit of a poor start, but, you know, it's okay. We can bounce back. Yeah. And yeah, the next yeah, match was a prime example of how they bounce back. That was the tournament final for the inaugural AEW World Trios Championship. As the elite, Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks defended against Hangman Adam Page of the Dark Order. The match was 20 minutes, and it was so fucking amazing. Yes, sir. Because, like, I can't, I even knew heading into this, Hangman Page, Kenny Omega, and the Bucks, all part of a all part of the same match, you already know it's going to be fun. Oh, for real. And then there's the Dark Order, but yeah, nobody cares about them. No, it's just, nobody cares about the Dark Order. It reminds me Maybe of... Maybe do, fair enough. But yeah, it reminds me of Revolution in 2020 when the Bucks took on Omega and Page. My God, God. that match is overrated. But then, but it was over. Yeah, it's overrated. It did not deserve a fucking six star rating by that piece of shit Meltzer. But that's okay. It's just his opinion. Um, it's his opinion. I don't like his opinion. But and as we all predicted, the elite were the inaugural the World t Trios title champions. Winners. I can't fucking talk. The trios, the trios belts. Those things that shouldn't exist. No, seriously, they shouldn't exist. Why are they here? They're honestly, they're, here's the thing. I, I believe they were here because, you know, you had so many stables, but a lot of people have been splitting up recently. And getting and getting released, and they're not here anymore. And getting Bobby injured, Fish. too. Well, yeah, Undisputed Elite is already Tyler no Ryan. longer a thing. Undisputed I, I don't know, I mean, Undisputed Elite is basically dead. No joke. What a like, shame, the right? The three members are not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> it is a shame. It really is. <laughs> Come back to the main oh, yeah, roster. Man. Exactly. <laughs> Give them Don't Got Triple H. <laughs> get out of there, Adam. There's a, no, in all, on, in all honesty, all, though, all two of you, putting, all, yeah. putting all jokes aside, though, I do believe that they would, they'll would they definitely come back to WWE now that Triple H is in command. Oh, they, they will. They will. Oh, yeah, they will. They will. Don't you worry. They will. But, was, but until then. for me, like, it was there. ish I mean, I don't remember much. I mean, I do remember a few spots. I mean, the, the ending was great. Um, hey man, did something. Yeah, and Kenny Omega took his bandages off, so that was cool. Yeah. He faced off with Hangman for a while. Yeah. There was a lot of moments. Yeah, the elite one. There was a lot of moments where, you know, you thought the match was over, but then, nope, still in. We can do this. I thought it went 30 minutes. Yeah, it almost went 30 minutes, but it was great. And I enjoyed it for what it was. And it was very really good. Even though it was pretty obvious the elite would be the first ever trios champs, they at least made it memorable. It was good. I had a lot of fun with it. It's a shame. Anyways. <laughs> it's a shame whatever happened afterward just made this whole thing pointless. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get to it. Yep. But yeah, good congrats stuff. to the Elite. And now we're going to move on to the next match. Where Jade Cargill defended the TBS title against a thing. Or should I say She-Hulk defended the title. That's the only thing I cared about. Jay Cargill was and, dressed exactly like She-Hulk, and I'll be honest, I actually, 
I like the reference because I'll be honest, I'm a, I'm entertained so cool. by that show. Hey, I don't want to talk about it honestly. I'm having, I'm not. I'm not. I don't hate it, but it's not your nah, cup of tea. Not your cup of not tea. Not my kind of thing. Not my kind of thing. I understand. But here's the thing, though. Yeah. I, I perfect. I, here's the thing. Ever since Athena showed up at Double or Nothing, I thought they were br- building her up as the prime person to defeat Jade Cargill, and I thought, oh, this is it. This is the moment. But just like with Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre, uh, that didn't happen. Nope. She got destroyed. She got she beat in four it. fucking minutes. And that was it. That was one of the examples of folk of folks. Uh, the matches being cut short. This is all right. Ma- fair enough. Good. Well, here's the thing. The TBS title matches uh, have always been cut short, if you look back on the history. Yeah, they have. And why was this needed on the card? It wasn't. No, no, no. Why was on the card? It wasn't. <laughs> it was not needed, period. It was horrible. So, it was yeah, pathetic. The whole stuff. thing with the TBS... Like the match is over. Yeah, here's the Jay Cargill. No offense. She can't even handle a 10-minute match. I get that what they're doing with having her being undefeated and all, but, like... <laughs> She's making it look too easy, and we all know it's not that easy. No, it's not. So, I... <laughs> I'll be honest, like, this is... The, the, anytime Jade Cargill's defending the TBS title, which I call, labeled TBS, the bathroom shit title. Oh, for real. That's what TBS stands for now, the bathroom shit. Every time that match is about That's to take place, person. y'all can have your bathroom break. Hell, you can, you can go ahead and make uh, yourself some nice food while you're at it, too. There you go. Because, <sighs> my God, that match was pathetic. I didn't even give it a star. I gave it three quarters of a star. There you go. And poor Athena got moved over from WWE poor over thing. to AEW. And, my God, she's being buried. Yeah, her mouth got her in trouble anyway. So Yeah, I'll her, be honest. Uh, that, um, that, yeah, that had a hand yeah, in it, too. I said it, folks. Yeah, that had a hand in it. Next! Yep, next match. Um, Next match was an example of another match that did not need to exist, and that was Wardlow and FTR against Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns. They brought them in from Impact Wrestling, and I get the whole thing. They're a major team over in Impact Wrestling. Yay, it's Chris Saban and Alex Shelley. They're they're good. They're really great guys, but um, they were not needed in this match. What they should have done is had Wardlow defend the TNT title against Jay Lethal, like that. Yeah, they don't care about Jay Lethal. No, seriously, they don't. And FTR, no offense to them. Why the hell were they here too? I don't know. Like I hear them, they're tag champs of three different companies, but not this company. Exactly. They're just doing shit for the sake of doing shit. Couldn't they have at least been joined up with Swerve and our glory in the acclaim of the tag team title match? I don't no, fucking know. No, because there's no thing as logic right now in professional wrestling. I'll be honest, I don't even remember much of this match at all. It went on for almost 20 goddamn minutes, and it was boring. I just don't like seeing the machine guns work as heels. It's too awkward. <laughs> I know they work as heels in the past, but that's I'm not used to it. <laughs> and why isn't Jay Lethal supposedly this big thing, this big deal that they had? What big deal? Oh, it's he... not a big deal. Well, that's what we should always believe. And Wardlow, oh my god, I am so sorry, man. Ever since you uh, split from MJF, Poor you've... Wardlow. You've been booked horribly. I am so sorry. I mean, here's like he cut a he cut a Wardlow. pretty good promo on Dynamite on Wednesday, but at the same time, he didn't have. Here's the thing. Wardlow had said, for all who's for those who said like you know I'm here to remind you that this is Wardlow's world. I'm like, good. Where's that been the last couple months? Um. When you're uh, the goddamn um, TNT champion and you're saying this is Wardlow's world. Well, make it your world. You're supposed to book it properly, folks. That's how it's supposed to go. Instead, he's always taking a mm-hmm. goddamn back seat. Yep. So that's why I was uh, really pissed off. This is the same guy who uh, squashed MGF out of the goddamn company. And I'm saying goddamn way too much. I am so sorry for taking the Lord's name in vain. That's I am so sorry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But yeah, like he literally powerbombed the man out of the company and then he came back and, you know, yeah. What's going on with Wardlow? We don't fucking know. What's going on with Wardlow? I don't know. Does anyone out there know what's going on with Wardlow? Anybody? I'll show hands. Show hands. There's only two of us in here. How about you? Oh, I'm talking to the audience, Christian. Wait, I can't even see them. I've never been able to see them. 
weird. But yeah, I don't okay, have really much of anything okay. to say. Wardlow and FGR got the win, and at the, when it, when it was over, um, you know, Jay Lethal and the Motor City Machine Guns tried to have Saddam Singh and Sanjay Dutt interfere and attack them. But then, of course, we got the return of Samoa Joe, who were like, where the fuck have you been all this time? I'm telling you guys right now, I didn't even mark out. I'm like, I just went silent when his music, music I'm like, oh, it's you. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> he just walked out randomly. Did he even do anything? Yeah, Samoa Joe probably showed up just as a reminder, saying, uh, yeah, I'm still here. I mean, I'm the Ring of Honor TV he's, champion and all, but uh, yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm like still here. I think he's waiting at his contract. Just just do that, Joe. You'll be fine. You'll be back in Triple H's on very soon. Don't you worry. I think this is a result of Ring of Honor not doing shit. Yeah, basically. Ring of Honor's got, like, no show right now. I get that they're under, you know... They don't. You're having a a Ring of Honor guys showing up in AEW and everything, but uh, this is not the same. Tony Khan, I am so sorry, but this is not the same. Until you start actually putting in more effort toward Ring of Honor and a show for them, then this is pointless. Exactly. This is very pointless indeed. All right, we're going to move on to the next match, which is also cut short. That's Powerhouse Hobbs against Ricky Starks, and he got the win, and and that's that's all I know. Uh, Apparently, like, there's reasons why. Apparently, like, this is not confirmed or anything, but take a grab. So, apparently, Ricky Starks wants his release. (laughs) Yeah. I'm not shocked. He wants out. He's not the only person, apparently. (laughs) Malachi. Malachi, there's actually reasons, but it's also personal. It's also he might he might want out. He might. Well, Malachi might. Black has uh, know. has uh, you know like a personal like a health mental health problems and that yes sir we all can respect. Wish him all the, the best. same time like at the same time like here's the thing even if he didn't have those mental health problems we would he, here's the thing I would understand him wanting his release because his AEW run has been fucking shit. And they botched everything, man. They Every botched everything last up. one of it. I don't understand this. Neither do I. Yeah, Powerhouse Hobbs uh, pretty much crushed Ricky Starks. So that was it. This was supposed yes. to be like a match that, you know, had like a builder because, you know, they were in Team Taz and all. This is a betrayal um, match that, you know, had a lot of like buildup. And uh, no, that's it. Yes. That was a waste of time, that was pointless, and that was stupid. And at this point, I was like, oh my god, only one match has so far been great. Oh my god, uh, AEW really needs to... Well, <laughs> they need to step up their game here because this is not looking good. Step up the game because the game is doing a lot better than you. Okay, I don't get that, but... Oh, right, Triple Triple H, sorry, I didn't... Yes. How the hell did step I... Step up their game because the game is doing way more better. How the hell did I miss that? Um... <clears throat> Anyways, however, I was like, oh, I guess they did hear me because the next match was, in my opinion, match of the night. The AW World Tag Team Title Match as Swerve and Our Glory defended against The Acclaimed. That was a fucking awesome contest. I did not watch it. Oh, no you didn't joke, see I it? I did not watch it. I didn't see it. Oh. I heard it was good, though. Yeah, you should check it out when you get a chance because it was so good. I, I loved it. Swerve and Our Glory retained their titles against The Acclaimed. That shocked me because I thought this was going to be The Acclaimed's moment. Should have been the acclaimed moment because Scrona Gore is doing freaking nothing with the tag belts. What do I know, right? Yeah, the crowd was highly behind the acclaim, so Swerve and Keith did a good job in, you know, portraying potential heel wrestlers. Like, you mm-hmm. know, as an improvisation. Yes, sir. Since you didn't see it much, there's not really much to say then, but I will say the acclaimed, they got a rematch at Grand Slam. And Arthur Ashe Stadium. Oh, Grand Slam's going to be something. Yeah. But I will I will say that the Acclaim, I'm, I got my fingers crossed that they'll get their chance to win the tag titles. Congratulations on Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland on retaining. They managed to, both teams looked fantastic to the point where, you know, we were literally begging for a rematch. There you go. So, yay, that worked. There you go. So we're going to move on now to the next match. This is a four-way for the interim women's world title. And over the interim crab. Oh, wait. Never mind. Anyway. <sighs> Seriously, the interim crab is just giving me such a bad headache. Hikaru Shida. Oh, yeah, by the way, stop disrespecting Thunder Rosa, by the way, Marks. 
Bye, yeah. Tony. Hikaru Shida, Jamie Hayter, Dr. Britt Baker, and Tony Storm. And the winner of the match Yay. was Tony Storm. And I'll be honest, she looked, yeah. the match was okay. I mean, it was a lot better than you know, the right. TBS title match, and that's saying something. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, kind of, Tony Storm kind of spoiled it a tiny bit because she started crying during her entrance before she even hit the ring. Oh, so basically she so, knew she was going to win. Like, win. When, like when Liv Morgan entered the Money in the Bank ladder match and she was already crying heading into it, knowing she's going to win. Yes. And yeah, her her wrestlers need stuff. to stop crying on the way to the ring because unless that's your gimmick when you're just crying all the time, then don't do that. You're giving away what's going to happen in the match. Oh, so Cody's gimmick. No, I'm kidding. Mostly, <laughs> <laughs> ah, you just couldn't resist that one, could you? I can't help it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> or Ric so, Flair's getting there. Or if you're a Flair in general, you cry. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So hey, what's your thoughts on what's your thoughts honestly on Tony Storm being champ? I really think that she should be the official hey. women's champion. Well, yeah. And then something happened afterwards. I know y'all are waiting for us to talk about. It. We'll get to it. We'll get to it, folks. Don't worry. We'll get to everything. But in my opinion on this, it was, um. Well, first of all, Thunder Rosa sucks as champ, and it's not her fault. Tony Storm, um, I wouldn't say it's an improvement. Um, the women's title has just been treated like crap. No, seriously, the women's championship has been treated like crap. That's all I'm gonna say. I hope Tony Storm does something with it. Um, for some reason, she's calling herself the real women's champion. I don't know why, but okay, whatever floats your boat. Um, yeah, and then Jamie Hayter and Britt Baker had some confrontation or whatever, and that happened. Yeah. <laughs> and Tony Storm became champion. Yeah, it's all I can really say. Yeah, it's Tony time. No, it's Tony time. Literally, it's Tony time. I'll subscribe to her on OnlyFans. Yeah, oh, wow. You had to bring in the OnlyFans. Yes. I got prepared for <laughs> shit. Come on now. Okay, then. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. Oh, yeah, bro. All right. Yeah, for real. Good, good fun match. Yeah. Next. All right, we're going to move on to the next match. Uh, and that was Christian Cage taking on Jungle Boy Jack. And it's over. And it's over. Next. Yeah, that's no, I'm it. kidding. No. No, literally, apparently, uh, Christian Cage apparently is hurt. And he's going to be up for apparently um, a very long time. No, nine no joke. nine apparently months, apparently. Hurt. Nine months. Well, I think he should retire. He's honestly getting old. Yeah. Speaking of old. <clears throat> what's up? What's up with that? I think I'm waiting. I'm waiting myself. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Luchasaurus that's, attacked that's Jungle that's Boy. Saying. Luchasaurus attacked Jungle Boy in his entrance, and that's what led to Christian, win heel. Christian winning in 20 Again. seconds. And I'm like, oh, wow. Christian didn't even take his shirt off. Like, no joke. He didn't even take his shirt All he did was hit the spear, and that was it. I thought like, you were okay. talking about me for a second. I was about to tell you, dude, I'm, I'm fucking <laughs> naked. That, not, not you. Not no. Well, let's make it um, the, 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 the Canadian crit. Wait, no, I didn't want no. no. Um, well, I, I'm Native um, American, actually, so don't. Let's still take it that way. There you go. The, um... The ladder guy. Yeah, the ladder guy. The <laughs> ladder guy. Yeah, the ladder guy won. Christian Cage won the match the in 20 man. seconds. There's Christian Cage and there's Brian Cage. Which one's in the company now? I understand the reasons for why it was, you know, like that, but <clears> the <throat> thing is, it doesn't change the fact that it still gets a zero from me. L, it gets an L from the losers. L, you're double L's. What's your second name? Double L's. And now we're going to move on to the next match. That was Chris Jericho taking on Brian Danielson. That match honestly was boring. It was you know, so slow and kind of messed up, and I'll be honest, I was disappointed. I expected more from those two of all people. The match I was looking forward to the most, and it bombed. Oh, okay, I wouldn't say bombed. Let me rephrase it. It didn't bomb, but it, there was so much that I could expect more from those two. I know they're getting old. I know that. But still, it's D. Bright. It's Chris Jericho. You know, the wizard. The wizard, the guy from the AW Galaxy, and the goat, the American Dragon, Debra. And it was just there? At this point, you know, I'm... the wrong winner. Here's the thing. Tony Khan needs more than just that wizard. Tony Khan needs the fucking Wizard of Oz so he can grow a fucking brain. Anyway, Yeah. Um, yeah, the match went on for almost 25 minutes. It was the longest match of the night, but it felt longer than that. And I was just irritated. 
Because it seemed like they were just not performing their best anymore. And can I also say another thing? Like, uh, Brian Danielson doesn't get exactly have a good uh, pay-per-view track record. He's only won once ever on pay-per-view. He beat Miro at Full Gear last year. Lost to John Moxley at Revolution. Lost in that Anarchy match. And he was the one who got pinned in that Anarchy match. Gross. And now he lost to Chris Jericho. But don't worry, it's all looking good for Deep right now. But yeah, he's uh Mostly. he's currently in a tournament which we'll talk about in a moment. But um Oh we will. And I will also say that Jericho is he's like, you know, fighting for the affection of uh what was it, Daniel Garcia. Yes. And Daniel G. <laughs> Daniel Garcia is upset that, you know, Jericho won via a low blow and everything. Had to cheat to win. You're a heel. Yeah, I don't think Daniel Garcia understands that heels got a heel. You're a heel. He's supposed to do that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I was, uh, uh, overall, hey, Willie, overall thoughts on Brian versus Jericho. I, I don't want to waste my yelling on this one, but I'm just going to say this. I mean, I'm not going to yell. I'm not going to scream because I'll save that for the ending. Don't ever do that again to Brian Danielson. Chris Jericho did not need to win. I legit got up, walked out, and I didn't watch the next match. So I'm like, oh, no, I did not watch the next match. That's how angry I was. Oh, you didn't watch the next match? When I got back in the – what's up? Oh, you didn't watch the next match? No. No, I heard about the outcome. That made me more pissed off. Well, it's a good thing you did because it was horrible. Oh, I heard. But yeah, Brian Danielson taking the pin. I got up, walked out, and I didn't come back until the main event. That's how mad I was. I didn't speak for the good total of the minutes I was gone. I was pissed off. And again, I was an Instagram call with friends watching the show. I was beyond pissed when Brian Danielson took the pin. So I got up, walked out, and I didn't come back until the main event. So you can talk about the next match, Christian, because when I heard about that one, too, that made me more enraged. And then the main event, let me calm down. Anyways, next. <sighs> well, I will say, like, yet, honestly, what All Out needed was Gordon Ramsay. He would have honestly been like, that's it. You, 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 fuck off out of here. Get out. Exactly. <laughs> I love Gordon Ramsay. He's a legend. Oh, for real. All right. Yeah, the next match was another trios match that did not need to exist at all and involved Darby Allen, Sting, and Miro as they beat the House of Black in like under 15 minutes and... Malachi Black took the freaking pin for yeah. no freaking reason. Malachi Black got pinned after Sting... What the hell was he supposed to do? Blow the black mist in his face or something but nothing actually came out? What? Wait, yeah. what? Yeah, Sting, That's what yeah, Sting performed like, you know, the mist to the eyes like like Malachi does. Of course. But um, nothing came out. And yet Malachi reacted as if he got blinded. And that's what led to, you know, the that's pinfall stupid. from Darby Allen. That's stupid, but it's it's kind of a kind of a miscon botch, so I'm not going to fault them on that. So. And regardless, they just put this in so they have an excuse for Sting to fucking wrestle. Like, fuck off. Can we just drop Sting already? Can we just put him backstage? Yeah, let's actually, you know? actually, uh, let's not drop him because I don't want to kill him. <laughs> yeah. Poor Miro, he comes we back were... and he's stuck in this charade. Oh, that's right. He recently returned. I legit forgot about that. And Thanks, Dar AEW. How the hell did Darby Allen go from being in a big time match of CM Punk at last year's All Out to this shit? I don't know, man. Oh yeah, my Darby God! Allen. Don't waste your breath yet, Christian. We got the big, big thing to talk about soon. You're wasting your fucking talent. You're messing them That's up. Usual. And you're finding excuse after excuse to put Sting in the ring. I can't believe how absolutely inconsistent they are. Very. Why is it it's always AEW we're ranting about? We usually rant about WWE too when they screw up. But now it's AEW's turn. Again. <laughs> well done to time. you. <laughs> Good job. We give AEW a sarcastic, well done to you. Good job. Fuck off you and put on some more down? makeup or something. Exactly. You can have your muffin later. 
<sighs> Next. Wait, did you just say muffin? Oh, here's where... Muffin. Yes, it was the. It's what the former world champion was eating. I'll be honest. I I could I could thing. I'll be honest. I could go for a muffin right now. Same here. I mean, after all, Willie. Willie. What's up? Willie. I mean, after all, I can help. <laughs> I can help you get you a good deal on getting some muffins. You wanna know why? Why's that? I know the muffin man. You know the muffin man. The muffin man. The muffin man. Yeah, the muffin man. He lives on Drury Lane. That's just a couple of blocks away from me. There you go. You want me to get you a good deal? Because I can get you a sick deal. There you go. Yeah, Excellent. Deal. After yeah. we're done the podcast, we'll definitely do this. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get a call to the muffin, muffin, man. All right, but folks, it's time for the main event. The yeah, main event. Like As AEW World Champion, yeah. John Moxley mm-hmm. defends against CM Punk, Chicago's a own... Dick. Chicago's own CM Punk. Uh, by the way, speaking of Chicago and the Now Arena, I heard I didn't hear about anyone getting stranded this year. So congratulations, everyone. There you go. I'm glad that people learned from last year's mistake. Yes. That's the one thing we were hoping for is that people would be able to get home safely. And thankfully, as far as I know, everyone did. But anyways. The main event, CM Punk and John Moxley. It was good. No joke. I really enjoyed it. It was bloody. It was great. I'm actually shocked that Moxley did not bleed at all, and it was Punk who was bleeding. Yeah, Mox didn't bleed at all. Funny, a John Moxley match where he doesn't bleed. At this moment, I was like, what the hell happened? Did, did you know there were memes about him? No, I don't think so. Well, um... Let's uh, flat out say it. CM Punk won the match. and CM won... Punk won the match. MJF came out, and there you go. Yeah, MJF. I like how at the ending of that, MJF had a recording of Tony Khan leaving a voicemail. Giving him an offer. Yeah. And in my opinion, that just confirms this whole thing was a work the whole time. All right, all right man. We were worked. Blah, blah, blah. Happy. There you go. We were yeah. all worked. There we go. Although yeah, happy. Was, Losers admit when they're on. Sam yeah. Punk won the world title. Sam Yay. Punk is AW World Champ for the second time, and as a result, that caused John Moxley to have an eleven day title reign while the rest of his interim reign doesn't exist. Yeah. Bah oh, God, I feel <laughs> bad for I feel uh... fucking bad. John Moxley, let's be honest, was shining in twenty twenty two. Was he, in my opinion, is the wrestler of the freaking year, the MVP? Yeah, look at everything well, he went through. MVPs. Start off this year, like having in like brawl after brawl, and then you joined up with Brian Danielson after feuding with him, and to form the Blackpool yep. Combat Club, became interim Best world champion. Yes, sir. Hell, went through blood and guts. Went through anarchy. Blood and anarchy of the arena. Anyways. Yeah, it was absolutely insane to see all of that. Moxley was interim world champion. Then he crushed CM Punk. But he's having banger match after banger match after banger match. He really is. I'm honestly, fuck the elite. John Moxley is the heart and soul of AEW. Yep. You lose Moxley, you lose everything. Yep. So that's why I'm saying like that dude is the guy. No matter how much you want to put Kenny Omega as the guy, sorry, John Moxley is the guy. Yes, he is. Huh. So it's unfortunate that he was um, that he squashed CM Punk in three minutes, all just to lose to him in twenty. Exactly. And worse than that, he lost to a bloodied CM Punk. That just made this unif- that unification match a couple weeks ago even more useless than it already was. That's right. If they were doing this just so CM Punk could win the title in his hometown, then why didn't they just wait for him to win it as his first reign? Well, that apparently a few weeks ago was Moxley's idea. Yeah, it was his idea to lose the title or have to win the championship a few weeks ago. Now, before we get so, to before we yeah. get to what went down afterwards, what I will say like. Overall, your overall your thoughts on All Out as a pay-per-view. In my opinion, it was a fucking fail. 
it gets an L, man. It was not as good as last year. No, it it wasn't. Seriously, folks, stop lying to yourself. All out last year was absolutely last fantastic. Year. Last year was so good. It was. The buildup was great. The buildup for this was horrible. The buildup was so rushed. They put in way too many matches and then rushed all those matches so they can stay under the four hour limit. If you want to do that, don't have so many goddamn matches. Exactly. Oh, and apparently, Christian, this is going to be a thing going forward with them having long pay per views. Oh, my Great. God. Wonderful. Great. That's all out. That is all no, out. Folks. That's all out. But we are not done. Oh, no, no. We're not done yet. It's time, time to talk popcorn. about what went down afterwards. First off, folks, um, I'm going to start when talking about Tony Khan. Because, you know, he was to asked about WWE host, hosting a pay-per-view, like, you know, on Labor Day weekend. And he went on a goddamn, he went on a fucking tirade by saying, like, you know, I'm going to fight back. I got money. I, this is my life. This isn't a game to me. I'm not going to stand yeah. this fucking shit. Like, here's the thing. Are you going to fucking... I'm not going to take this fucking shit. Like, the way he talks <laughs> and everything, I'm like, are you going to sneeze or not? I'm, I'm not going to take this fucking shit. I, I got more money than Jim Croc, and I'm like, shut the heck up, Tony. Yeah, quiet. and then he's, like, looking around like he's scared to death. Like, what's... Are you okay? Exactly. He looks like he's so scared all the time. He's all bug-eyed. I was expecting to get up and stand up and buff up and be all muscular. I'm not going to take this fucking shit. Yeah, here's the thing. He's I've so seen, basic, it's so stupid. I've seen, I've seen antelopes look at headlights with a lot more closed eyes than that. Exactly. <laughs> Come on, Tony. What are you doing? Like, are you? What are you scared yeah. of? Like, are you? So stupid. Even when he's like being happy, <laughs> like when he talked about like on Dynamite when he was making those announcements, he was supposedly happy, but he still looked like he was scared shitless. Exactly. Like a deer in the headlights, bro. Just like you said. Nah, not even a de even a deer in the head. So even a deer stupid. in the headlights would be asking, "Are you okay?" Exactly. <laughs> then he starts talking about basically without name dropping them, the competition, you know, they hold the show on the same day. So Hey, so he, he should consider he should be happy that WWE made sure that NXT took place hours before all out, so that when the show ended, they had more than enough time to prepare for this one. It did not exactly. affect Exactly. It did not affect their pay per view buy rates. Exactly. It did so not affect that, their Tony? viewerships. And no there was nobody was competing head to head. Consider that a fucking favor in business. Which this whole thing is business. Tell me it's not a war. Get over your fucking get ego. Your Shut the hell up. Sit your ass down. Work your show. Work your talent. Get your talent good. Make sure your roster is not too overflowed. Sit down. Shut the fuck up and get to work. Exactly. Tony, you are so irritated. That's why I call you Giggles the Clown. Because that's all you do. <laughs> That's all you do is get on the locker room and stuff like that when you run your wrestling. <laughs> punk, punk, all that stuff. Oh, we'll get to punk in a minute. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. We'll get to him in a minute. Tony, you need to run a wrestling company to be a boss. That's all I gotta say. Oh my god, that, that 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 laugh, I swear to god, you could have been a perfect joker. No, right, I'm not talking you. MJF, I mean like the character. <laughs> there you go. Ah. Black Joker. It's a black joker, actually. <laughs> the first black joker. <laughs> Hey, you, you want to be the you? Hey, you want to be the first live action Black Spider Man, right? I do, I do. That'd be great if you were Miles Morales. Miles Morales. Okay, hey, everyone wants to know. Now it's time to get to the fun. Yep. All right, guys. This is what it went down. The whole reason. Brace that yourself. All Out was a terrible pay per view, but everything was overshadowed by what happened afterwards. Tell him and tell him, Christian, what happened. I feel bad for MJF. He had his big return. I do, too. And all of it was destroyed as a result of what went down at this media oh, yeah, scrum. Guess. And honestly, like, can't you just call it a conference or something? Because media scrum, I'll be honest. I know that's a name, but it just doesn't sound right. I don't know. CM exactly. Punk, uh, like, sat down. He was eating muffins. I, I like muffins. CM good. Punk, that's Phil. That's Phil right there. That's not CM Punk talking. He literally said it. That's not CM Punk. That's Phil Brooks. So, like, he was, like, sitting down. He was eating muffins. And uh, it seemed like he was having a good time at first. Because, you know, he's world champion. Oh, yeah. And, you know, when people tune right. into that, 
when they want to hear, oh, what, how'd it feel to win it in Chicago? What do you expect to do now? What's your thoughts on MJF? Like, you know, do you, are you excited to have this great feud? And you're expecting to be like, man, this is a great night. Had one of the best nights of my life against a great opponent. And I love these guys very much. And I can't wait to see what's next. That's not what happened. What does he do, actually? Uh, this man goes on a freaking tirade. He started. No okay, first, first off, yeah, he talked stupid. about, he brought up Cole Cabana. So if anybody's saying, like, you know, oh, Cole Cabana, somebody asked him about Cole Cabana. Like, no, he fucking brought him up himself. Saying, like, oh, he's like I'm someone so who didn't want to see me at the top. Talked about the lawsuits. And, exactly. And I will say, he said Dude, he has some. Why did Punk sound like Darth Vader? Like, what's, that? what's wrong with this Punk's voice? Like, what was wrong with his voice? Why did he sound all Talking with his mouth stuff? full. He's right there. He sounds like Scott Colton, you know. Scott Colton, you know. That just sounds like Darth Vader. Like, what are you? Why are you cheering me for your food? You well, like, well, I, yeah, I was about to say, yeah. Talk with your mouth open is the first sign that you're an asshole. Chew, chew with your, yeah, chew with your food. Wait till you're done. Swallow it, and then swallow your pride while you're at it. Oof. Swallow your freaking ego too. Swallow your pride like Tony Khan swallows page. your dick. Exactly. Then he goes on a tire about Hangman Page. Ladies and gentlemen, where before is we get, this whole thing with I Hangman Page coming from? I hope, hate to interrupt, but before we get to Adam Page, um, the thing is... Oh? CM Punk went way over the line regarding Cole Cabana because, you know, he was sharing personal information saying that he shares a bank oh, account yeah. with his mother. You don't talk about that goddamn shit! Punk also kind of referenced, like, if you basically if you live with your mother, you're a dick. Like, you're, you're nobody. Babe. I think that's kind of what he's kind of... I don't know. And I, it was weird. Punk was basically like, well, you know, he's lived with his mother, you know, you know, fuck that guy. Fuck him. I don't give a shit where he, I don't give a shit where he lives. All kind of stuff. I'm like, come on, dude. What are you doing? Yeah, but this, is, this is, this is nothing to do. Right. Yeah, this is nothing to do with it. It's like, if you, if here's like, he understand, he denied the rumors that he attempted to get Cole Cabana fired. Obviously, I didn't think for one oh, moment course. that he would try to get Cole Cabana fired at all. That didn't even bring up in my head and everything. Yeah. And it's like going on a tirade about it. It's like he could just simply say, no truth of rumors. And then Tony right beside him be like, no truth of rumors. Moving on. Next question. Here we go. But then all of a sudden, you know, Sam Punk saying, calling, talking shit about the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega saying like they're irresponsible people who couldn't even fucking manage a target. Well, I mean. He's not wrong about that part, though. I'll get that. <laughs> he ain't wrong about that one. No. The elite had egos. I'll give it that. They do. They really do. So he's not. He's he's got points on he's that. He's not wrong about that one. What else did he talk about? Put it in the mirror that I got Coca um, Bana fire when I have fuck all to do with him. And everything. So What's like, that? he's like, Punk, CM Punk started going back on the proper thing by saying, "I'm trying to sell tickets and fill arenas." And I was like, "Okay, okay, here we go." He's starting to do good here, but then all of a sudden he goes back onto the tirade. Brings up Hangman Adam Page for no fucking reason. He was not even discussed. This is why I say this. What? He called Hangman him an empty. Left way before this. Yeah, he he called him an empty-headed fucking dumb fuck who went into business for himself. I'm like, oh, like you're going into How? business for yourself right now? Exactly. How? How did Hangman go into business for himself? I know people are gonna say, oh well, he disrespected the legends and stuff. He didn't want to take advice. Blah blah blah. Thirteen-year-old veteran, ladies and gentlemen. Granted, you still shouldn't disrespect somebody. But still, am I, is, is the promo that Hanger cut a few months ago with the buildup? If that's the case, then that should have been held behind closed doors. Indeed. And Phil, I ask you this question. How come you're mad at Hangman now, and you're still mad at him, yet you weren't mad at um, Eddie Kingston when he had a problem with you last year? Hmm, seems a little fishy to me, doesn't it, Punk? Very, very hmm. indeed. <laughs> oh, and by the way, apparently you, apparently you didn't want to lay down for Hangman Page. Fuck you. And he, I mean, he we'll did not at all. Because I'm just saying, like, he also said that Hangman Adam Page is someone who d hasn't done a damn thing in the business, and that has jeopardized the first million dollar house well, that this company has drawn off my back. Well, he's kind of right about that one. I mean, Hangman did need help with the whole thing. He wasn't really known with the nobody pretty for the elite fandom anyway. So Punk is somewhat right on that. I'll give him that. But to say he's a nobody almost is... Yeah, he's, yeah he's, he said stuff yeah, like yeah. he's a nobody. He's, he also said Adam... He even said, like, the entire AEW locker room isn't worth shit if you have him in there because he's an empty-headed idiot. I'm like, who the fuck are you to say this stupid shit? Honestly, I don't understand why Tony Khan's just sitting there right beside him, just letting him say this shit, saying, okay, that's enough. We gotta move on. Step up, be a man, be a fucking boss, show him what he needs to do, because as a result of all this, you're showing you're a fucking pussy. 
Mm, mm, mm. Be the there fucking go, pussy person. when you're supposed to be the the fucking boss of the whole damn company. CM Punk is your employee. And he's your priority. He is your freaking guy who you're supposed to be paying money for. And even and of course, course CM Punk also once again taught shit on MJF, saying like I uh, oh, while yeah, he is yeah. supremely yeah. talented, he likes the shit where he eats instead of water in the grass. I'm like, I'm like who the heck are you, Punk? I mean, that's kind of true. I'm not going to lie. MJF does one out. I'm not, I'm not surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. But still, like, you know, punk, who the heck are you? And as who a result of all this, then there was a brawl backstage, like in lock, in the yeah. locker room. Yeah, he gets up, goes backstage, and the story goes, and there's two sides to the story. We're not going to go over. Well, I don't have the thing that happened, but well, I have a few details of what happened somewhat of both sides of the story. Well, so some yeah. Get, some people say that some people say that the yeah. uh, young bucks and Kenny Omega burst through the door to confront CM Punk. Yeah, they kicked down his door. Yeah. The others are saying that he they successfully opened the door like you know like normally, and before they could say anything, CM Punk started throwing punches at them, while Kenny Omega is trying to save CM Punk's dog from this whole. And then charade. Ace Steel jumps on Kenny Omega and starts to bite and scratch at him. When Kenny is not even doing anything wrong. So people are saying, how how do how do y'all know this is real? In the freaking scrum, no joke. When Punk left, and I think ten minutes after Punk left, you see security like running over, like in the corner. You'll see security running to the back. So yeah, something went down. Oh, and then a guy walked into Tony Khan and started whispering something in his ear. So yeah, this was all real. This is not a work, folks. Get out of your freaking head. This is not a work. This is as real as it gets. CM Punk. I mean, this is a work. Maybe. Here's the thing. I don't as know. a result of all this, everyone who was involved was suspended. The elite are no longer the trios titles. They were vacant, and Death Triangle won them on Dynamite. So now we have new trios champs. Sir. As for the world title, that's yep. been entirely vacant. Uh, CM Punk. Good. We don't know exactly what's going on. I've we've heard he's also injured again, and he's it's a serious one this time, and he should be out for eight months. That's way past WrestleMania, close to double or nothing time. The engines. He injured himself during the freaking brawl. Apparently, no, no. He injured himself apparently during the um the ma match with Moxley. He jumped off the top rope and he hurt himself. Doing yeah, something. uh, that's. Then he re-injured himself during the freaking brawl too. So that happened. Yeah, I'm just gonna say so that happened. Sam Sam Punk, the little fat mouth, little stupid bitch, should have gotten fired. I agree too, but there's a problem, Christian. There's a big problem with firing Punk. Uh huh. There's a lawsuit. Uh huh. Yeah, there's a lawsuit. Yep, that and is true. If they fire a punk, if he's hurt, there's a lawsuit. <sighs> my God. So there's no way out of this. The only thing I could see them doing... Oh, and the Elite. Yeah, they're in the wrong, too. Don't be busting on the people. I know punk threw crap. I know. And I and also, ladies and gentlemen, I get that punk was defending him. I, I'm not trying to pin it all on punk, but he kind of started it. I'm just saying. I know Hey Man Page started the whole thing. Hey Man Page. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. That's for y'all to decide. Um, CM Punk, you, my friend, you just... It's time to hang it up, bro. It, you're done. Goodbye. The whole you're thing done. about CM Punk being back into wrestling... Even John Mox has said it last week on Dynamite. Says, I, are y'all disappointed that this that CM Punk's return wasn't what you thought it'd be? My God, yeah, everyone, everyone was calling this. MJF even said, that we won't get a chance to see the real CM Punk. Even Eddie Kingston alluded to the real CM Punk. I know the real Punk. That's the Punk I know, which I'm surprised Eddie Kingston didn't deck this guy. CM Punk but is yeah, still yeah. full of shit to this day. Maybe Everyone maybe that was the, the reason. Back. Maybe that was the reason why when <laughs> simply asked about it, Vince McMahon had even said, "Well, he's their problem now." Yep. <laughs> so again, so yeah, finally, I mean, the whole thing's out. Punk's been suspended. We don't know how long suspension is going to be. The Elite's been suspended. And everyone's been suspended, even, you know, um, uh, who else in the fight? Christopher Robert, Daniels. Uh, Christopher Daniels. Yep. Um, who else? Christopher Daniels. I don't fucking was... know. There's like... I can't remember. So many people were Go suspended as a result of this. Of course. But yeah, they all deserve the suspension. Sam Punk deserves to they be do. fired entirely. Like, get the fuck out of here. Honestly, leave wrestling and this time never come back because you're being a fucking disgrace. Mm. And I, again, I'm going to say it again. If you're a punk fan, that's great. Awesome. All the power to you. But please admit, you know, when, when your fans can be a dick. That's about it. Which, you know, I didn't. I got good friends who have admitted that. And that's great. God bless them. But there are, you know, I don't know. I've admitted when my fans are a dick. 
you know, Punk, he's just, God bless him. Seriously, God bless Punk. God bless Phil Brooks, but you got issues, bro. You got issues, man. You got Everyone it. has issues. Even the Elite have issues. Punk has issues. Tony Khan has issues. That locker room is insane. Yeah. They need a leader. They need a legit leader. And hopefully Tony Please. Khan is hopefully Tony Khan has taken one step after the other end of that because, you know, he suspended everybody. Good. That's the first step. First step. Second he should step. also sure, he should also Punk have he should also have like a meeting with the other talent again saying like we do not want this shit ever happening again. Don't think that yes, you sir. run this place because I run this fucking place. I run this fucking shit. Then use that energy, Tony. Come on now. Use that, use that energy, energy toward your talent to make sure they know who's in charge and instead of aiming at the WWE <laughs> because they're holding a pay-per-view on the same weekend you are. Like, fuck off. Exactly. <sighs> I feel better. Honestly. I do too. I mean, honestly, you know... Oh, nobody took what I said about the whole fan shtick. You know, you hold your babes accountable. Who it's gives totally a, fine to do that. Let's be honest. Who gives a shit, honestly, if they don't like what you said? Eh, their opinion. I mean, my opinion as well. So they got mad at me. It's only fair. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Overall, though, the losers line, man, the that was our triple awesome review. Story. That was our triple review. We managed to cover this in just a little over two hours, and I'm proud of that. A triple threat. Yep. All right, folks. As a result of, you know, like everything that went down, huh, we could definitely use the break. So we will definitely be seeing you in four weeks, actually. Four, four, four. To predict Extreme Rules. Here's what's going down when we mention nine weeks. The predictions of Extreme oh Rules. And then after that, the review of Extreme Rules. The week after that, the predictions to NXT Halloween Havoc. And then the review of ha Halloween Havoc the next week. And then after that, the predictions to Crown Jewel. And after that, the review to Crown Jewel. And then after that, the predictions to Full Gear. And then after that, the predict the review of Full Gear and also the predictions to Survivor Series. And then finally, the culmination of that is the review of Survivor Series. So the start of pretty much the entire weeks of October and November and the first week of December, y'all will get podcasts from us. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're going to need to stock up on popcorn. Yes, you will. <laughs> I cannot wait for everything that's in store for this. Uh, this is why I love doing this. This is amazing. Yes. All right, well, folks, that is going to conclude episode 97 of our podcast. And Heel Balor, you know what to do. Well, what a week. We're the losers, and this is our lounge. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you guys in four weeks. Hope you enjoyed the show. Please hit the like button down below. Subscribe and do all that shit. We love you guys so much. And you'll see us again very, very soon. Too sweet. Peace out.